Welcome everyone to the Atomic Cinema Experiment. I am Peter and I'm joined as always by Tara. Greetings citizens. This is a science fiction movie podcast we get together every week. We've watched the movie and we talk about it. Uh, that's that simple. And we are looking at, for the first time in a while, a new release. I guess the last one was Tenet, just because that was the only thing that came out. Uh, <laughs> like in a mm -hmm. big sort of new release sense, sci-fi wise. <laughs> Uh, but we worked through uh, the relevant franchise films uh, last month, but we're here today to talk about Godzilla vs. Kong, uh, directed by Adam Wingard, who I like from his horror movies that he's done, and those are cool. And Tara's making a face. I don't know what they are. You're next. Oh, that is a good movie. <laughs> okay. I feel like you were like judging. Like, oh, I don't know if I trust this opinion. Like, uh, well, I was gonna look it up, but okay. that's all you need to say. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, you're next on the guest, uh, being the good ones, uh, and then not so much Blair Witch. But hey, uh, so yeah, Godzilla vs Kong. I think we actually will have a little spoiler-free section for this one, just because it is a new, new release, big new, new film coming out. Uh, and you know, we are basically we have a very similar kind of opinion. Uh, between us on the previous three films in this monster verse, which is that we both love Godzilla 2014, uh, despite, you know, certain factions of the internet don't agree with that, but we do. Uh, Kong Skull Island, we're both kind of lukewarm to mildly negative on. Uh, that's maybe an accurate way of putting it. And yep. then Godzilla Kai the Monsters is a very, very, very flawed film with lots of things to not like. However, there's some things in that are, that are really good <laughs> and kind yep. of make up for all its flaws. Uh, so you can check out our big reviews of all those three uh, in the playlist. Uh, so th those were quite recent. Uh, so obviously we're into this hoping that it was going to be good. Uh, I, I was a little concerned that my uh, boy Godzilla was going to be made out to be too much of a villain, but we'll uh, we'll see how, how we fare mm -hmm. as, as we go here. <laughs> so... Yes, I mean, uh, as far as giving you the premise, I mean, ultimately, it's just, well, Godzilla and Kong are going to fight. <laughs> there's there's some reasons for it, uh, but ultimately, that's what it boils down to. And that's really all the spoiler-free territory uh, plot that you need to hear about. So I'll simply ask the question, Tara, what did you think of Godzilla versus Kong? I really like it. <laughs> I might love it. I'm not sure. You may but love I really it. like it. <laughs> uh, oh, Oh my. Uh, do I elaborate a little bit? Well, I mean, it could just be because it's recent and I haven't had a new movie in a while, but <laughs> I do I do really like it. Like, I actually, I, I mean, obviously the, the human characters are the worst part, but they're not that <laughs> bad. They're not that bad. I actually kind of like some of them. Um, some of the jokes, I think, were kind of funny. I mean, some of them. Some of the uh, characters are just cartoons, and I kind of enjoyed that anyway. Like, there's like a, I guess like a an evil corporation who's headed by a guy from the Hateful Eight, which is exciting. <laughs> Bob from the Hateful Eight, and um, I liked him in it too. Like, he was very mustache twirly, and I'm like, oh, I don't know what this movie is. It's a cartoon, and I'm kind of into it. It's got a good tone. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have many thoughts. I have many thoughts on Godzilla <laughs> versus Kong. Uh, I, as you may have suspected that I, that I would. I, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so much pressure. So much pressure on me right now. Um, I, I like it overall. And I like a, a lot of things in it. Uh, but there's definitely some things in it that I do not like. So really? we'll get into that. Um, and I, I guess the, the thing I'll, I'll sum up here, and we'll get into it properly soon in spoilers, but I will say that the plot of this movie is the most stupid <laughs> thing it could possibly maybe be. Like, <laughs> they went all in in some, like, absurd oh, yeah. concepts that were kind of casually mentioned as just an explanation why things are the way they are in like, the previous monster movies. Here they go full on in, you know, both feet, like, neck yep. deep, beyond the neck. They're drowning 
and the ideas in this film and <laughs> they don't care they just keep going with it they just keep going with the flow no matter like what and i i guess but, i mean it's it's a godzilla sequel like they gotta up the ante right and i can't ridiculousness i kind of respect that it. it's not like a lot of the japanese films didn't get silly and stupid and went batshit insane with the, the concepts because they totally did <laughs> Uh, I guess there's still a minor disappointment, even after King of the Monsters, there's still a minor disappointment because what I love about 2014 so much is that none of the films that have followed on from it have even tried to be that film, or even tried to no. feel that they're connected. Like, even though Godzilla looks like Godzilla from that movie, I don't feel like when I watch Godzilla 2014, this film and King of the Monsters I'm including in this, they don't feel like they're really connected to that 2014 movie. They say oh, yeah. they are, but they don't really feel like they're the same world. Is Godzilla smaller than 2014. I don't think so. And I'm basing it off, you know, that shot in Gazelle 2014 where Elizabeth Moss, not Moss, Elizabeth Olsen, sorry, there you go, fix my Elizabeth's up, when she's like in the middle of the street and like there's a, a Muto on one side and she turns around and Godzilla stands up and raises his head. I'm using mm -hmm. that shot in my head for scale. <laughs> And that okay. seems about the same as this movie. I think maybe he just seems like he's bigger because that movie's done from the perspective of the humans. Yes. So, like, one of the things I praised about that film was that Godzilla is just, like, it gets scale so right. Like, he feels mm -hmm. out of this world. Uh, so, I, I think in my mind, it's like, they can't be the same size. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think this movie, though, like, the fights are great. And honestly, the trailers, I thought they looked dumb. And I thought it was going to be dumb, but there's like three fights in this movie, and all three of them are great. Like, I get real into it. The fights are good. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that was the easiest thing to get right, bizarrely, because, uh, I mean, typically the complaints of these movies have been the, the, the human characters. What was funny is that people complained about the human characters in King of the Monsters, and rightfully so. I think the humans and the plot in this have a almost like a, a flip of the, the problem, where... In that movie, the the problem with the human characters was they were trying to be too quippy. There was all these like cutaways for them to crack one liners. There's not actually that many one liners in this movie. Uh, mm -hmm. It kind of veers away from that. Uh, the problem in this is kind of the opposite: is they went so batshit insane with the the plot and what the characters are trying to do. Oh yeah. That, <laughs> like, because one of, one of my legit small critiques of King of the Monsters was that it felt like we were in a world where like they had like tech that felt a bit science fiction-y because it felt a bit more advanced. The, this movie has like absurd things technology-wise. Like they, they went way into the deep end on this. That, well, that's five years later. This makes King of the Monsters look <laughs> grounded in terms of, well, the world, <laughs> basically. Oh yeah. It does. We're it in full science good. fiction. Yeah, future we're, world we're, here yeah we, we, yeah we're in full well like, i mean <laughs> kaiju existing in the same world as us means that we have to up our technology is that really. right okay <laughs> it's a parallel universe where we have to we have to step up our game i'll get into some specifics and, spoilers, and we have alien but... technology ish because aliens exist since king of the monsters proved that well, yeah, but we've not really encountered any of the aliens themselves, other than one, which is Ghidorah. Monster Zero. Monster Zero. <laughs> yeah, Ghidorah. Uh, yeah, uh, but so, I, I, I bet, hold on. So, I, I want to make it clear. I don't want to sound too down on it, because the, the, the fighting when it gets going is really good. Uh, some of the beats that I wanted are there. I will say, it does maybe lean into Godzilla just being a villain a bit too much for my <laughs> liking right <laughs> a bit too much like there's lines to explain things but the the music especially still treats him like he's the villain for far mm -hmm. too long and i have to say and i think the problem with this for me is someone who is very much a godzilla team fan godzilla. very team godzilla is that this movie definitely treats Kong as the protagonist monster. He's the one that yeah. is more sympathetic. Well, he's our American hero. I mean, he's not he's from Skull Island, but you know, he's Skull Island's not American. He's he's an American <laughs> ape. Yes. Uh so because of that, it, it sort of views it through this this lens. Um and there's a, there's definitely a couple of moments. Uh, no, I had to watch the movie twice. I actually watched it a second time today. Uh to to really soak in the details and sort of like and I, I think i actually enjoyed it a little bit more the second time because i knew what i was going into i think the first time there's a moment about halfway through the movie 
when they're doing something just insane from a plot perspective. Uh, I'll just say it involves the Hollow Earth. And I, I, I kind of sat back and went, this might be really stupid and I might really hate it. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Like, what, what are they doing? And then it gets... And then it, I, there's another thing that I thought I hated the first time as well, uh, which got me to audibly laugh out loud uh, when a certain moment hit. Uh, again, I'll get into that in spoilers, but... Um, knowing where it was going and being able to just kind of sit and focus on it in the second viewing, I kind of like... I was like, okay, I kind of appreciate the just the absurd, like just the, basically just the director saying and the writer for that matter just being like, we're just going to do this, we're just going to go for it. This is That's just not care. Uh, <laughs> now the humans are very thin, like they're paper thin. I think part of the problem is there's too many of them. Uh, I think part of it is j- just like. Maybe just give one human an arc. Get give a human an arc so that you know when the monsters have their arcs, the human can have an arc and it'll feel like important. Because the problem is here is not that obviously the monsters are always going to be more interesting because it's a monster movie. We're here for the kaiju. We're here for mm-hmm. for them. But you can still have a character have an arc, and I think to give kind of the monsters some credit, Kyle Chandler's character does have an arc in that movie where he's very and it's very simple. He's very anti Godzilla, and then by the end he learns, you know what? No, Godzilla's kind of a good guy. So I'm, I'm going to be on Team Godzilla. It's very simple, but it's something. You know, a human is passionate about something and changes their mind because of lessons learned. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, don't, I don't think any of the humans in this have <laughs> a single change <laughs> in their perception of anything. I uh, think it, it, the humans sort of suffer from just the blockbuster element of we have to have mm. someone that represents everybody in the family. So there's always like a kid. Millie Bobby Brown's grown up somewhat, so we have to have a new kid introduced so that the kids have something to latch on to yeah. when I watch the movie also. Um, that's just something that you see in blockbusters. Yeah, Millie Bobby Brown's uh, you know, getting close to retirement age now, so we have a new mm-hmm. little girl <laughs> to run around. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and honestly, like I don't mind I don't mind the character that that they introduce for the little girl that has a relationship no, with, no. with Kong. Honestly, she's one of the, she's probably the best human character, actually, mm-hmm. if you stop and think about it, because of a couple of key moments. Um, so I, I think the dialogue is is better by omission, just because it try it doesn't try no to, jokes. just because it doesn't try to be so jokey. Uh, right. th- that's not to say there's no bad because there is one or two really forced lines that really bugged me. Um, I'll just say when a certain thing is named, I felt like it was really in my face and like you didn't have to have that <laughs> but line. that's what his character was there for to tell you what things were called uh-huh. but i i do really like um that actor i like the hunt for the wilder people kid yes. who's also growing up so <laughs> yes <laughs> um i liked it's basically like two teams that were following right there's like scar scar and his crew and then millie bobby brown and their storyline and you know yes. one's following kong and one's following godzilla like it's not maybe there's too many characters but you're, we're sort of just following like three there and three on the other side it's not too bad it's not like king of the monsters where there <laughs> there's so many characters and they have to fly to eight different continents well i mean however many there are but like, <laughs> <you're> not, <laughs> you know what i mean they're not I mean, like yeah. going back and forth <laughs> everywhere around the world and like wait who's with who now um <laughs> mm-hmm. um yeah I, well I, I don't know if i agree with that completely because it kind of the monsters did have too many characters but it, they were all in the one location the difference here is they're split into two groups i guess uh but there's still too many no i mean they were in, in king of the monsters I, that was one of the complaints i had was like i kind of couldn't like keep up with where everybody was going all the time and they kept splitting up and then they would have their like secret government aircraft jet <laughs> helicopter thing but i'm probably going to come without the minority on this i think i like king of the monsters a little bit more than this one mm. not by much admittedly I, I don't i don't think there's like a huge gap but i think you have really stupid characters in king of the monsters and the character motivations for why they basically set everything into motion is absolutely insane um i think this one has so many big dumb ideas that it's the plot and what they're doing that feels kind of silly. 
and so, some of the elements are so just thrown out there and rushed that they don't stop for a second to let me soak in the crazy ideas that they're trying to introduce and i'm like wait this is weird this is what we're doing in this movie um but yeah so that's my comparison there because I, 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 I do because some people like hated king of the monsters and I, I i do genuinely think there are there are if you put out like a checklist of each movie i think there are positives in the king of the monsters column that you know go against this one where they don't quite succeed at those elements but then obviously mm-hmm. this one also has things that that one doesn't see that you see that i think they're almost even in my mind from an objective point of view i think my subjective taste means that i like care of the monsters a little bit better and i think the reason for that uh is well three things really characterization i can tell is one of them i suppose but the two I things knew it, yeah. but the, the two things that i really <laughs> think about though is one the music where was Godzilla's theme and why was it some cheap knockoff? Like, Junkie XL, you can do better than this. What If you're going to go to the trouble of having something that sounds kind of like the evil part of his theme, then just mm-hmm. use the actual theme. It just sounds like you're doing a knockoff. It sounds like when a wrestler leaves a company and goes to a different company, so they can't use their own music, so they do like a knockoff version of it. They get like a, we'll do something that's a few chords off. And, and it's like, well, it's just I annoying. I don't know that reference. But I did notice the music, like, uh, and it didn't bother me that they didn't use the theme because I thought it sounded like it, sa- it sounded like they were trying to go for that that sound, but to do something new with it. And then that, that's I why I hate it. it. No, if, if it's going to be compl- <laughs> if it's going to be completely different, then fine, be completely different. But don't like go so close to it. That just annoyed me because it just well, I don't know, like the it, uh, you know the new Star Trek, the two thousand nine Star Trek kind of does that with the music where they'll. They even like at the during the end credits, they'll have the the new one flow into the old theme, and you're like, oh, okay, like this yeah, is nice. Different. Like, no. it's a new thing, and it's that, that's not the same thing. Know. That is completely different. They're still using the old themes. That is cool. I like <laughs> yeah. that. That that's a good. They, they have this new themes. But and they only really do that in the in the end credits. Like, so for the most of the movie, like you still get the new well, no, stuff. No, but but it other... sounds like the old one enough. No, it doesn't. It's a completely new theme. Uh, another example of what you just said there is Jurassic World, which has both the original Williams themes and it has the new theme that was created for the film and it uses both. It, it blends in seamlessly back and forth. These are completely different examples. This is different. This is this frustrating me so much. Every time Godzilla shows up, it goes... Dan, 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 dan. And it's like, that's not the theme. You're, you're doing the same sort of sound. There's a similar... Mm-hmm. It's, it's the rip-off version. I, like... It's not like they're not allowed to use it. They used it in the last movie. It annoyed me. Every time it played, it pissed me off. That's problem number one. And then number two is that Ghidorah's... Oh, this is all fanboy complaints, no, though. No, no. <laughs> no, that's not, a, that's not a fanboy complaint. I think that's legitimately distracting. That's It's not because it's different. It's distracting because it's so close, but not quite it. Uh, okay. I think that's a legit complaint. Uh, number two, this is purely down to taste, probably. But I think Ghidorah is a better villain, uh, and I think Ghidorah's presence in the last movie was very good. So I'll I'll just I'll say that because we can't talk about where this goes yet because <laughs> we're not spoilers. But uh, <laughs> but uh, so you know I really like Ghidorah, uh, and I I just I, I think that's the other thing when I talk about Godzilla's characterization in this. I feel like there's not enough questioning of why he's doing stuff early on in the film. It doesn't make sense to me that in the last movie, someone literally sacrificed himself to bring Godzilla back because he was our only hope of like surviving and the only hope mm-hmm. of saving the world. And at the start of this movie, it's like that never happened. People like the movie treats Godzilla. It doesn't treat it like he's acting out of character. When Godzilla first shows up at the very start of the movie, it's treating it like, no, nah, he's always been kind of villainous. And it's like, no, he's not. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> This was not... Well, I mean, it's it's five years later, right? So people have time to, like, listen to conspiracy theory podcasts. Like, people can turn on something because someone is telling them to. Someone very powerful with a lot of money is telling you, no, these are the people that you need to be afraid of. Oh, okay. For... Oh, okay, that answers the people question, maybe. But even then, I still don't buy that everyone's bought into that, right? Well, not everyone has. Like, there oh. are still people who... But the other, right, let me finish. <laughs> let me, me. Yeah, but let me finish the sentence, right? But that does not answer why the movie treats him like that, though. It doesn't answer why as soon as he pops up, the music gets super. Oh, the evil monsters here, and he's well, going. It's, to... it's Godzilla versus Kong, right? So we have to. I, 
obviously Godzilla <laughs> is the bigger one. Like this is the juggernaut. Like how the hell does Kong even um, compete? This is not like good versus evil fight. This is Rocky Balboa versus Apollo Creed. And Godzilla is Apollo Creed in this. I think that's how it's treated. Okay. Okay. Look, I'm just saying there was just little things about the tone that was given to Godzilla when he was appearing early on. It felt like it went too quick to, oh no, I just evil. I just, just right. deal with it. Uh, that, that, that's it. There, there's one moment, which I think this is a spoiler, but there's a moment later on in the film where when he's arriving somewhere, he like intentionally like stands up under a bridge and the bridge like gets like just like torn in half. And that, mm-hmm. that was the one, because everything else in the movie, because Godzilla, like, I don't think for a second Godzilla, like, doesn't actually kill anyone when he's, like, even doing the most heroic things that he's done in these movies. Given his size, there's collateral it's damage. Impossible. There's people yeah. dying Humans somewhere. Right. <laughs> but, in the first film, he intentionally kind of saves a bridge at one point, and I think it's really weird that in this movie, he almost goes out of his way to just cause destruction for destruction's sake. Um, now, admittedly, there's a nice contrast that kind of makes him look better later on, but it, it, it just, it, that, that one moment is the one thing mm-hmm. where Godzilla, because other than that, I don't actually think Godzilla, like, has, in terms of how he acts, like, all my problems with how Godzilla's portrayed for the rest of the film are all just down to how no one really sticks up for him, <laughs> really. Like, technically, Millie Bobby Brown is kind of, but even... I think the problem with like that stuff is that there's not really a- enough compelling arguments. It-, it is just kind of like, ah, you're being a teenager who's like listening to podcasts. You know, quiet down. <laughs> <laughs> like it, just, it comes off as a bit. No, no one's like seriously considering anything. Um, it is, it is whatever. Um, I, I guess, yeah, we have to get spoilers to talk about the rest of it. So I'll, I'll just leave it there. But, um, yes. Yeah, so, so I-, I have some nitpicks with, uh the portrayal of how everyone responds to Godzilla and that but you think this is like uh this is Zack Snyder's vision of Superman all over again <laughs> no well <laughs> Godzilla's not Superman right there's a there's, there's a big fundamental difference uh although that's like said, there's always going to be collateral damage when Godzilla's around people are always going to be there are always going to be some people who are just like I don't feel safe with Godzilla here <laughs> That said, there is a scene right out of Batman v Superman in this, and I will be talking about that when we get there. <laughs> uh, I think I know which one. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so, yes. Um, Zeta, what's his spoiler for me? Um, uh, yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying... Yeah, I, I guess... It kind of wants to be Kong's movie more so. And as a Godzilla fan, that's kind of a little bit frustrating because it means that it has to frame Kong as the as the good guy. Um, He's not the good guy. He's Rocky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is uh, frustrating. But uh, yeah, because there's, there's a line in the trailer where uh, Rebecca, what's her face, Rebecca oh. Hall. There you go. That's her. Uh, where she turns and says, "Kong bows for no one." And like when she says it in the movie, I just sort of leaned in and went, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, he will. <laughs> he will. <laughs> do, <laughs> if I, that's how you do the Batman v Superman comparison. Like, do you bow? You will. <laughs> I just think of Lord of the Rings. Like, I don't remember. I don't remember you that movie no enough. One. And then everyone bows to the hobbits, and then I cry. Oh, I should watch those movies. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I believe that was right at the end of the twelve-hour uh, onslaught that, that that series was. <laughs> you have no one but yourself to blame for watching the extended edition first. I, I think that you are mistaken in the belief that I will like the theatrical cuts. <laughs> That's what I think. I mean, wait, hold on a second here. I'm concerned by something. I'm just oh, he is. I was just, I, I caught in the corner of my because I've got the IMDb page up, and I just happened to notice in the little, little version of the image, I was like, that looks like Alexander Skarsgård's not wearing trousers. So I had to click yeah. on him to see if that was the case. And sure enough, he's standing with a, a tuxedo top on. He's, he's got the, the jacket and the bow tie, mm-hmm. but then there's no trousers. 
So. And tiny whiteys. I saw that. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. A little something for the ladies, I guess. I don't know. I, I pr appropriate Making attire. a fashion statement. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's get into the uh, into the, the the spoilers, into the spoilies. Then, <laughs> uh, so uh, I will take this time to thank our Patreon producers for the month. So thank you to Tyler Hess, Cindy Palacios, David Sharp, Board Now, Al Traisman, Christopher Moy, David Brown, and Stanley. Uh, Tara is now going to tell you about Patreon. Uh, that's right. If you enjoy our reviews, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash TV and donating as low as $1 per month will get you access to bonus episodes of The Ace. So if you're looking for your favorite B-movie or sequel B-movie to a movie we reviewed on the regular show, then go head over and check that out. Maybe it's there. And if you donate $5 per month, you'll get access to our reviews one day early and uh some shows you get a week early and you get voting rights and all sorts of stuff so mm -hmm. thank you well, there you go also you can like subscribe that's the free way to support us it helps us out a lot on youtube so please do uh okay so first things first when you put lance reddick's name in the opening titles as if he's going to be an important character and then he has literally maybe four seconds of screen time <laughs> Like, he's literally yeah. in this movie less than Joe Martin was in King of the Monsters. Mm -hmm. Like, legitimately less. Yeah. Why is his name in the credits? It's, it's a cameo, if that. I mean... Oh, I didn't even notice that his name was in the credit, opening credits. But... Yeah, it's in the opening titles. So I, I, was, I noticed his voice when he showed up. I was waiting for him. And then he he's, he's there, and he's gone, and the blink of an eye, and that's it. And you all know I he was also in the 1998 version of Godzilla? I did not know that. <laughs> uh, I can only assume... <laughs> that he did have more scenes that were cut but that's why he's got like billing to be in the opening titles because is i mean is he above somebody who is and has less screen time i mean that bloodshot girl had like above not that much screen time either yeah but she was there for a while i mean tara he was literally on screen for four seconds people who are on screen for four seconds do not get in the opening titles <laughs> well maybe it was a mistake <laughs> the mistake <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they put him in the opening titles he was cast in this movie and he got four seconds of, of screen time uh, yeah he really wasn't in it very much but yeah, yeah like comically little like this is the the most little outside of like a, a alfred hitchcock walk-on cameo where he's like waving for a bus and then walks off like <laughs> even even hitchcock's cameo in some of his films was longer than lance reddick's screen time yeah but he didn't have lines gone. He did have lines, yes. Whereas Hitchcock usually did not. That, that is very true. Uh, I just wanted to start with that before I forgot to mention that Lance Reddick was. I mean, in. were you hoping for Godzilla versus Kong versus Lance Reddick? <laughs> I think Reddick could have stood his ground. <laughs> I mean, he, he's a powerful dude. He's got a stare. Really? He's got that stare to him. He looks very intense at you. He's, you know. Yeah. It makes him such a good continental host. Hmm. <laughs> so anyway uh so the movie begins uh on skull island which it tells us but something's off something's wrong uh and it turns out we're actually watching the uh the kong show because the truman, <laughs> the truman show <laughs> the truman show style dome that he's living in which is still on skull island though this is the weird part of this um which made me, I had so many questions about this, and I don't really care about the answers. This is not these, this is not me nitpicking the movie. I'm just, but it does make me think of a few things. One, so did they like not come out and like build this and then put him in city? Or well, I'm not saying they built it literally as he was knocked out. But I mean, did they build this and then knock him out and then put him inside it? Right? Is that what happened? Mm -hmm. Or did they slowly build this around where he typically hangs out and hoping he wouldn't <laughs> notice? <laughs> just nobody make any. Like, big movements if he's looking at you. Yes. <laughs> Just everyone freeze. Yeah. And it, ha it has been a long time since, obviously, you know, Skull, Island Skull Island we saw, you know, in the 70s in the movie, right? That was that was when that was set. So it's been a good 40-plus years of time. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so lots of things have been happening. We get Old Man Kong, too. He looks different. Yeah, he's he got looks, a beard now. He's got a bit, a bit of grey and he's, he's far, for sure. Um, 
And the part of the reason why I, I mentioned that it's on Skull Island, which I think is really important, is that I, you know, but, but maybe twenty minutes later in the movie, when I mean, Alexander Skarsgård gets, gets like, interested in the film, and he's this, this scientist who's been studying the Hollow Earth. Remember, remember in Kong Skull Island when they mentioned the Hollow Earth theory and that that's where the Titans come from? Yeah. Well, I didn't realize it was going to be the basis of the entire goddamn plot of this one, mm-hmm. but uh, he wants to go to the Hollow Earth, and he, he believes that Kong, a Titan who is natively from there in a sense, even though I think he's born in Skull Island, but he's you know, the idea that his parents are from there or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. that he'll be able to access blah, blah blah so they're going to use him for that that's why he wants to use it the but, biological memory thing that causes animals to want to go back to where they're from yes but the reason why i mentioned any of this right now is to make one point about this being on skull island is that he says okay well we have a titan we can go use and it's this kong mm-hmm. we cut to skull island and then he kind of just shows up at the door of this dome when it's raining and all i could think was in Kong Skull Island, they established that there was like a never-ending storm that like surrounded the island, and it was like really hard to get into. Like, and it, it like I'm not saying that obviously clearly they've been doing this for forty years; they know how to get in and out. But it was just really weird to me to just cut there, and he's already there, as if it was just like a simple bus ride, <laughs> as if it was just mm-hmm. that easy to get to Skull Island. Uh, he's just there. <laughs> yep, that stuck out to me. But uh, well, technology is all different now. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, uh, I, I guess it kind of leads to a, uh, at least to some kind of a genuine complaint about like how the Titans feel now. And in, in Godzilla twenty fourteen, part of why we love it so much is because they feel so special and unique to the world. And the regular world has been invaded by this force that is so gargantuan and unbelievable. Whereas yeah. in this, they just kind of feel normal. It's just like ah, oh, this is a world with kaiju. They're used to kaiju now. You know. Yeah, in twenty fourteen, they were like. Like the 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 actual je- definition of the word awesome. Like they were just yes overwhelmingly like this is not. I have no description of this. <laughs> it's just yeah. it shouldn't exist. <laughs> yeah, you know that's why the monolith music plays as uh, <laughs> as Godzilla's making his grand mm-hmm. entrance. You know it's that kind of feeling. Uh, yeah. But uh, yes, but anyway, to go back to the start because the Godzilla's first scene as well, which is important. Because uh, we're interested in the podcaster, the conspiracy podcaster, played by Brian Tyree Henry, who I do like as an actor. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not really that fond of his character in this movie. Uh, I yeah, think he's he's pretty cartoonish, but um, most of the it, bad. I, it's okay. I'd say most of the attempts at bad comedy uh, come from his character, or at least his group, if not his character specifically. Yeah. Uh, and. Because uh, I, I wasn't like super into. There's a scene here at the start where he's he's he works at this this company, so Apex Industries or whatever they're called, right? Uh, this is the company that's really heavily involved in everything. And he's he's he works there. He's he's like, he's an engineer. He's not like he's just like a like he's just like got in the door as a janitor or something like that. He's he's got you know he's 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 qualified to be an engineer here, but he wants he's trying to steal secrets. He's trying to get intel and whatever. Uh, and there's a whole sort of like comedy scene of him like trying to basically just annoy this guy into like leaving the room. Uh, so you can get time on the computer with his USB stick, uh, but it's just him like going on about GMOs and how apples are not safe to eat, and like it's just it's just all <laughs> that. It it kind of feels like a, a, it's like a scene in a Paul Feig movie where he's just letting the actor improv a bunch of shit, and they just keep some of it in whatever he liked the most. Uh, I, yeah, I guess at least it's consistent throughout the film because he he never really stops being that way. Oh, that, like a Paul movie, they they go up and down. Oh, sure, like, yeah, yeah. Is this or isn't this your character? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that that's fair. That's fair. Uh, but I wasn't like a, a super into this. Uh, it, it made me worry a little because this is right at the start of the movie. I was like, oh god, is this going to be like the characters like throughout this thing? <laughs> uh, yeah, concerned. Millie Bobby Brown too. She's also into the conspiracy theories. Which Lock- I think it's kind of funny that her character is into that, like, because she was raised in this like fringe sort of yeah. <laughs> of government thing where like she knows like the weird that, stuff exists so like she just naturally falls into that that was a minor quibble <laughs> for me as well i think is that the characters who return which is mainly her and to a much lesser extent her father who's got a couple of scenes uh yeah, which is funny <laughs> which is funny because he was the main character in the last one which is why that's really mm-hmm. that's really odd but i think he was the last name that popped up on the credit opening yeah. credits actually was and kyle chandler like <laughs> 
Yeah, but Anne doesn't necessarily mean always, like, sometimes Anne is just the prestigious, no. you know, you get the Right, you know, the exactly. Anne credit. That's how yeah. I took it, actually, yeah. when I watched it. It's like, oh, he's going to be back. Cool. Uh, not really. <laughs> but if I have, you know, I, I, it's not a huge deal in this case, because it's not like I was really attached to Millie Bobby Brown's character in the last movie. But I will say her character in this doesn't feel like it's really the same character. It feels like, oh, we want her back because people like her, but we're just going to put whatever characteristics we want her to have in this movie, regardless of what the previous one was. Uh, I, I did laugh because at one point you see like a photo of Vera Formiga, and I'm like, is there no one going to talk about her crazy plan? <laughs> Come on, let's start talking about her crazy plan. Uh, but he, he, so he's in there, uh, but the, the alarms start going off as he's doing his thing, and it's because Godzilla's coming, they've got an alarm system, they've got an early warning system for kaiju attacks. Um, and well, admit, and this has been consistent throughout the whole thing, like all, all the movies, but it was bugging me in this one a little bit that they, they have just replaced the word kaiju with titan. Like, there was a point where they said titan for like the fifth I time. I didn't even notice. Where I was just like, oh, just say kaiju! <laughs> just say kaiju! <laughs> I didn't even notice. So ashamed of it. I mean, they they were consistent with the whole Godzilla versus Gojira, if a Japanese person was saying it. Sure. Yes. Yes. Uh, and there's the, but that's the thing. So obviously Godzilla does have a reason for attacking this plant, uh, which we always suspected mm -hmm. that he did from the trailers, and we you know, but it, later on it's very clear why he's attacking this place. But it's kind of framed, and the, the the direction kind of makes it feel like he's just attacking a city, like he wouldn't like an old Godzilla movie. Uh, because yeah. he comes out, he's blasting his atomic breath at things. Uh, my favorite thing about this sequence, some of his stuff where he's just looking at Godzilla, because uh, there's a shot of uh, when they're leaving the helicopter, and it's uh, we'll talk about who this is in a minute, but the, the guy's looking back at him, and it's like Godzilla's in the distance in the water. Uh, and it looks it's a really cool shot. My favorite mm -hmm. thing about this sequence, though, is we get the perspective of what happens inside a building when his breath goes through it, and I kind of yeah. love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, pure destruction. Everything yeah. melts. It's, it's what saves uh, you know Tyree Henry's character because he's, he's 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 sneaking around where he's not supposed to be, and two guys have got him at gunpoint, uh, and then then they just get eviscerated by atomic breath, and there's just this right. hole where walls once were. <laughs> yeah, and we get to see the eye, the eye of something. Yeah, well, we're not spoilers. You don't have to dance around what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well we don't i guess we don't really know what it is because it is just literally like an eye i'll, I'll be an eye that's like pulsating yeah i'm going to be honest on the first time i watched that i didn't get that it was an eye I me was, neither i i assumed it was just part of something but i didn't know it was the eye it wasn't until the second viewing because where I was like, it's just like a yeah. glowing orb so we don't yeah. really know what it is but on the second viewing it was oh yeah it's just the eye <laughs> yeah uh but yes so uh, some nice details some i Nice I do moments. also like in that moment when you're looking at the the after he like creates the hole, mm -hmm. like it seems like Godzilla is like right above him or something, but actually no, he's like way yeah. <laughs> he's, like miles away, but like his atomic breath reached all the way over there, and that's what you're seeing. Like I thought that was kind of a good shot too. Yeah, there's a lot of good moments. Yeah, I think Adam Wingard, for as much as I'm going to like pick apart a lot of stuff in this movie from a, like a storytelling and character standpoint. <laughs> Uh, I do think a lot of the fighting and kaiju stuff looks really fun. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't look as good as 2014 in my opinion, but that's more down to a taste and uh, like I think visually that movie's quite stunning. Here it's a lot more colourful, it's a lot more fun and poppy and uh, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. But so, but it, but it's not necessarily worse. It's just taste I, I'd thing. say honestly, I'd say it's more. It's close to King of the Monsters, but yes. it's more contained. Like, I, I know you have problems with the where everybody goes and stuff, but, like, I, I don't know. Like, it feels it feels like a tighter film to me. I think that, I think that's fair. I think it's fair. I, I think ultimately both both this and Kind of the Monsters, though, I ultimately shrug it at the end and go, well, it's a dumb movie, but I really like the monster stuff. <laughs> I, 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 say yeah. that, and I say that about both of them, even though I have, like, things that I like more or less in each one. Uh, ultimately... <laughs> My overall opinion on both of them sounds quite similar when I sum it up in a simple sentence. I, I don't mind the human stuff when it comes to Kong because I think like we, it really is Kong's movie more so than Godzilla's film. But, and because- That, that like was the Kong, first mistake. <laughs> well, I don't think so. Cause Kong like is easy to empathize with, you know, he's got a, he's got a face like ours, I know, I'm just, know. I'm just joking. I wasn't being, I'm just, I'm playing right. my part, okay? okay? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> it's, fine. It's, fi it's fine anyway, because they actually had the balls to show who would win. 
and they got it correct. So <laughs> you're so smug. <laughs> 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 the best thing about this movie is they didn't chicken out and showing the truth. No, I mean, <laughs> spoilers, but yeah, you know, he's fighting Apollo. <laughs> that 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 monkey went down, baby. <laughs> anyway, anyway, yeah. we we'll get we we'll get there, we we'll get there. Uh, <laughs> so, so I mean, that's that's see, is it, it, is is pretty solid, right? And it, but that's the thing. It, I I wish the movie almost made more of an effort to show that. Godzilla is actually just targeting this base, and he has a reason for it. Um, he's not being excessively destructive for no need. And this is the thing, later at the end of the film, I was sort of hinting at this earlier, but at the end of the film when Mechagodzilla is doing stuff, like immediately it's like, oh no, Mechagodzilla is just trying to destroy as much as possible. Cause there's, and there's a distinct difference between what he's doing what Co and what Godzilla's been doing the whole movie. So it right. instantly makes Godzilla look a lot less villainous just by comparison. Uh, mm -hmm. But more than that when we get there. Uh, I will say there is a pacing thing in the movie where there is kind of like after this opening scene, it is a while before we get to the next sort of big thing. Like, because because the next big thing that happens is really the fight in the water at the boats, right? There's a lot of you know after this, there's a lot of introducing of all the various characters. We have to introduce Millie Bobby Brown at school, uh, her friend from Hunter from the Wilder People, who they like mm -hmm. keep his accent. Fortunately, uh, we have to introduce uh, Scarlet. Did you say unfortunately? Did you say but, unfortunately that they let him keep his accent? No, fortunately, fortunately. Okay. I'll be honest, I got confused there because I didn't even remember where I said that, you know, <laughs> what, 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 what was being asked. But yes, yes, fortunately. They got, yeah, like, that was a longer pause than I was expecting. Yes. Because I'm like, when did I, when did I say anything that sounded like unfortunately? What are you talking about? And then you, then you specify, I was like, oh, okay, I, I get what I said now. Um, okay, because his accent is delightful and it should never be changed. My, my brain's two sentences ahead of what my mouth is saying, so... I've forgotten what I said, <laughs> which is a problem I have often. That's my job is to stop this train <laughs> whenever possible. Nothing so you can't complete a thought. Nothing stops this train. And that was a Breaking Bad reference, which is relevant because Brian Cranston. In fact, the biggest disappointment of this movie. On a stretch. The biggest disappointment of this movie is that Mecca Cranston never appeared. So. <laughs> you sound like the upset people from 2014 right now. I'm clearly joking, I'm, I'm, I'm having fun, stop poo-pooing my great humour, you wench. No, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> I don't know how to think about ending to my sentence, alright? Sometimes I put myself in a corner and I'm like, okay, I don't know what word I'm going to end with, but... <laughs> Well, I guess Wench isn't so terrible. Wench sounded, <laughs> Wench sounded uh, humorous enough to get away with. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Yes. Um, so there's a lot of character introductions, uh, specifically the, the, the evil boss man of, of Apex, and also as his uh, second in command, who's a Japanese gentleman, who, and this is what's funny about this, is that in my first viewing, I actually didn't hear the name the first time he says it at the start of the movie. So really, really late on in the movie, when he casually calls him Sarazawa, I went, wait a minute, what? <laughs> you know what? I had the same thing, because on the second, I, I watched, well, I watched it one and a half times. I didn't finish the, my second viewing, but yes. it, in the beginning, I didn't even realize he said Sarazawa in the beginning also, until the second view, and I went, oh, I guess I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> now, now to, 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 I think to be fair they say to very us, clearly too, like here's my assistant, Mister Serizawa, or whatever. Yeah, Not I think it, to, to, to be fair, right, it is a Japanese name coming out of a of an actor with an accent, right? So mm -hmm. you know, Bashir, you know, sort of rolls it a little bit, and it's it's you know, I I, I was a little distracted on the first viewing because I was watching it on stream with people, so I, I, which is why I made a point of watching it a second time before we reviewed it. Um, uh, I will say I kind of hate that they did this because because the implication, of course, here is that this is Sarazawa's son, right? Mm -hmm. Sarazawa who sacrificed himself. Yes, I for kind Godzilla. of I I kind of hate that one. Was there a m mention of him having a son ever uh, before, which is especially weird. Maybe he did mention it, and I've just forgotten it because uh, that's how little important it was uh, when it came up. But 
if he didn't mention it, it's kind of weird that he didn't mention anything about his, you know, his son when he was about to sacrifice himself. Like, you know, can, you know someone tell my son that I did this, you know, I love and him. his son's an adult <laughs> at this yeah, yeah. point. Uh, but <laughs> but I'll, I'll forgive that to a point. Well, the, the, he, he, my ahead. main problem with this is that the, easily the best character in the last movie and arguably, maybe even in the uh, the first Godzilla, maybe Brian Cranston ranks higher for some people, but I think Sarah Zawa in a lot of ways is the the audience heart of the movie, right? This is like hardly it. I, I yeah. don't understand why. Yeah. Right. I, you're you're giving me his son, but you're giving me his son who is this try hard asshole who thinks he looks cool and literally has a uh, has a jizz face later on when he kills something when he's controlling Mecha Godzilla, like. This character is is so paper thin, and he's ju- he's just got the name because oh we can use that name and uh, uh, right so that that extends. Well, I mean, I guess his name kind of links to like the Japanese character who understands <clears throat> technology. <laughs> well, that's why the the pre- that's why his father was called Serizawa. Well, even when we were watching Serizawa in the other Kong film, or not sorry, in the other Zilla film. We were we were asking that question like did the other Sarazawa also have a son that he never mentioned like because he dies too, <laughs> so I guess it's consistent right like no one ever mentions they have a they have a kid. Well, no, 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 because we, we established that he wasn't there wasn't like a son thing. It was just a tribute that he was named after that character. Yeah. So no, it was he would no that was never a thing. Uh, that was just us. That that was me just grossly speculating that they were trying to like say that Sarazawa in twenty fourteen was the son of the character in the original film, even though it made no sense because he was like a loner who had no... Like he was in love with the other woman who was marrying the other guy. He didn't have a son. <laughs> Plus, Ken Watanabe yeah. was nowhere near old enough to be, like, <laughs> born pre-54. Uh, yes. So... Right. Right. Yeah. So I actually also deleted that out of the, the episode because I realized how stupid the conversation was. Uh, <laughs> oh, I didn't so, realize that. <laughs> so now everyone gets to know how stupid that conversation was, because that's how I brought it up now. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, behind the scenes for you guys. Oh, and maybe if you go back to when she started that point, there may be a moment where you can see the cogs in my brain turning, going, oh my god, why is she bringing this up? I deleted all this. <laughs> I don't know you deleted it. I guess I did listen to it for QA purposes. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Anyway, he's such an unlikable douchebag. So, and he's working with the villain. So it's just, it's just, he's just there for name recognition because his name means something. And it's, it's basically <laughs> what prequels do, where they'll put something in that we recognize because oh, we recognize that name without any meaning behind it. Uh, and and kind of a similar vein actually. So you've got uh, evil boss man. Right, uh, Bashir's character, who's the, the the president, the CEO of of uh, I keep wanting to say Star Labs because that's a DC Comics thing, uh, of Apex, and later on we're introduced to his daughter, who's Isaac Gonzalez's uh, character in the film, and also a paper thin character. Like I didn't like her character that much because she was just this really stereotypical. Like I'm the she I'm... seems to play the same person in every movie, doesn't she? She's like super typecast as like evil hawk girl. <laughs> yeah, she's like I- I'm business lady. Uh, Cause she has like a really bad like uh, speech when she arrives, where she's like, "Oh, our fancy ships that can go to the center there can light up Vegas for a week. It's okay." My daddy impre- can do whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah, but it was the line at the end that really bothered me because she sort of paused for a second, and goes, "It's okay to be impressed," and then walks away. And I'm like, "That was so forced." <laughs> um, <laughs> like it's just it's a really bad character. But so this is this is this is you know, Bashir's daughter supposedly, right? And she references that she's his daughter, and then later on, Bashir references, oh, my daughter's on this mission. Mm-hmm. However, these two characters are never seen together, which isn't necessarily a problem on its own, but that's just the start of this. They're never seen together, and not only that, later on when she dies, Bashir, not only does we, do we not get a reaction, he never even finds out. <laughs> he never even no. finds out that his daughter died. So it's one of these things where all I, could, I was like, Wait, why did these two have to be related? Why, why is this his daughter? It actually serves no purpose other than a shortcut in writing where they think that by having them be related, it means that we care a little bit more. Uh, and we don't. Because it's meaningless. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it, you're right. It, it's not necessary. Like, she could have just been somebody working for him and somebody of yeah. importance who was allowed to do the things that she was doing. Didn't have to be her 
or his daughter. It's it's, it's just just meaningless. Uh, and the other th- the thing that I thought was was odd about Sorozawa's character, just to go back to that real quick, was yeah, sure. Um, that you know, Sorozawa in the in the last movie like sacrifices himself to save Godzilla, and his son is apparently working to destroy Godzilla. Yes. Like <laughs> it just seems odd. Like a He's like, so <laughs> so it's the complete opposite of what his father would have wanted and there's no indication to be like why? Like is he mad at Godzilla because his dad died to sacrifice him? There's like and even that's kinda iffy like To ah. give him I'll give him a little <laughs> bit of credit. There is a moment later on before they turn Mecha Godzilla on properly. Because they turn him on for like a test at one point, but the proper turning on at the end. Um where he does say, hey, we don't know how this is going to affect him. Maybe we shouldn't rush into this. But other right. than that, other than that one moment where he says, maybe we shouldn't rush into this, he comes off as like a, a bit of a, almost like a, a, like a kaiju adrenaline junkie, right? That's how he comes off. Because the, the, the moment I alluded to earlier is when they do the test run thing where he kills the skull crawler. Everyone remember the skull? Because we all love the skull crawlers in Kong. Uh, <laughs> but the, the, it, was, the, it was good to see one get torn in half. Yeah, they, so they're, they're breeding skull crawlers just so they can test their, their, their mech, right? And when he kills the skull, because he's got like a VR headset on, but it's more like a neural link, which is actually a very Pacific Rim when you think about it. But he's got like a neural link thing on. And when he rips the skull crawler in half, which is like, it looks good and it's nice, a nice moment. Well, he right. uses the atomic breath to like slice him, actually. Oh, you're right. Sure. Of course. Sorry. Yeah. Like, forgive me. Uh, but yes. <laughs> but he, but it, either way, it's in half, right? And it's got blood dripping and all that. See, when he does it, it cuts back to him and he, no shit, he makes an old face. Like, he basically orgasms. It. I mean, like, I think, yeah, something about the power, I'm sure. I mean, <laughs> it, it's it's a face of satisfaction, sure. <laughs> oh, I, mean, I don't know why it's bothering it's you. It's a face of immense satisfaction. I let out a laugh because he was basically sitting there going, oh, yeah, oh, revving rev the monsters in half, love it. Yeah, it's also the face people make when they have a good sandwich, like, it's all right. <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, one of the best sandwiches I've ever had, sure, maybe. Every sandwich is the best sandwich. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Bread is king. <laughs> not, not, not when you put uh, peanut butter and jelly in the same sandwich. Mm, it's not. That's a good sandwich. Garbage. Absolute garbage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, so, I mean, we're basically, I mean, this is the thing. I, I, obviously, this has spiraled into talking about some of the characters, but, like, we've literally talked about everything we can about Sarazawa. That's him done. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Eliza Gonzalez's character, uh, or Isa's Gonzalez's character. I said Eliza there. It's easy to sort of slip into that by accident. Uh, yeah. Like, her character, we've basically talked about everything other than maybe how she dies. We'll save that for when we get there. But otherwise, all it is is, uh, we can do what you want. My dad owns this. Like, mm-hmm. I'm in charge. I wear sunglasses because I'm hot. So go away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's basically it. And, I mean, they show that she's spineless because when stuff's going down, she's like, oh, he's after the monkey. Put the monkey in the water. <laughs> like, that's, that's like a one emotive line uh, at yeah. a, a point. Um, Skarsgård, who's kind of a scientist, and then uh, Rebecca Hall, who's like our, our Kong keeper. She's like the Jane Goodall of, of Kong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're just kind of blank slates for the most part. I mean... Uh, I'm really glad they didn't make him, like, love interest, though. No, I, I, I like that, too. Uh, like, there's one point where he's, like, so excited that she agrees to something that he kisses her, like, on the cheek, and she has a reaction, like, what the fuck? Like, I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <sighs> it's far enough, and I'm not going to edit it out, but you're on warning, okay. Missy. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> We're just two friends talking. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> but she, yeah i think it's most funny is that it, i think they're bordering on uh hiddleston and real arson uh sort of zones with how bland and how like two-dimensional these characters are but the one benefit they have that i'll give them in this is that they don't try to like make him cool so they don't mm-hmm. so that that was the extra annoying part in that movie is they tried to kind of like yeah make him a badass I- I actually found him kind of funny because of how afraid he was of Kong. Like it, when when Isaac's mm. character first shows up on the on the boat and stuff, and he go, has to go out to where Kong is in order to like greet her, and like he's shaking her hand, but like bending so far forward so he could stay as far back as possible. Uh, it was a funny shot. 
Yeah, uh, the little girl, honestly, is probably the best character. And I think it's because, A, she's the one that communicates with Kong. She's the one who, obviously, like, feels the most vulnerable. Like, And she has, she actually has the best comedy, bizarrely. I, I guess I have to partially give uh, Skarsgård credit for this, too. But, mm-hmm. you know, there's a moment, uh, like, when she, cause she, speaks, she doesn't speak audibly. She's, she's deaf. Which, actually, I think one of the neatest parts of direction in this is a, there's a few moments, especially early on, when it's introducing the idea that she's deaf where the sound kind of like goes away and it's kind of mm-hmm. given us her experience of what's going on and she can't hear uh, Kong's footsteps, which, funnily enough, there's a lot of moments in the other movies where you would think the characters are death because we can't hear anything coming towards them. <laughs> but but it's usually a well because there's a moment where she can feel the vibrations of Godzilla coming. Like, no one else knows yet, but she can feel it. Yeah. But she can't hear it. She can't hear Godzilla. She doesn't have the distractions of yeah. other noises around her, so she just gets that bass coming through. Yeah. Uh, that's a really exceptionally neat thing. large yeah but the joke that that i enjoyed is that she calls scarsgard a coward and he was like it's that sort of sign or something like that something to that effect uh i don't know the same language <laughs> but she does that and scarsgard just casually goes oh what's she saying and rebecca hall of course is not going to tell him the truth she goes oh she says you're very brave and he's like oh thank you and there's a, <laughs> and then the smug little look uh on on the girl's face afterwards i just thought it was really charming and funny um, but there's a nice payoff because later on at the end of the film, when he's trying to like give her like a pep talk, uh, and he doesn't know any sign language, so he just does the one thing he knows, which he, he thinks is the word brave. He's like, you're very, and he does the thing that means coward. And she just looks up at Rebecca Hall like, that's asshole. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's a nice payoff. That's a nice right. payoff. Yeah. Um, the characters are immensely thin, but at least they didn't try to like pretend they weren't like Kong Skull Island. Like, it, like, there's a, there's a weird, like, either you devote time to the characters or you don't. And if you don't, that's okay if it's that type of movie. But don't try and pretend like I'm supposed to give a shit. <laughs> like, don't try and pretend. Like, I care about Godzilla. I care about Kong because they're the ones that actually have, like, arcs in this movie, bizarrely. Because mm-hmm. they are. They're the ones that have oh, a change yeah, of, of mind by the end. So, uh, yeah. It so is I, their movie. That's the characters, uh, more or less. Maybe there's some ones that I've forgotten that'll come up, but... <laughs> more or less yeah i think we got them all yeah i think that's all of them uh so yeah so so they're transporting kong uh because they want to go to the whole earth oh sorry we did miss one character oh go on which is the head of Ghidorah. (laughs) oh i was gonna say brought up when we were talking about sure sure, yeah i I was gonna leave that just because it's more of a plot thing than a character thing but (laughs) well i mean sure i guess we could talk about when mecca shows up yeah it's, re- it's relevant to the mecha stuff at the end so i was just gonna leave that till then but no g- good point in fact the, my the ghost fa- of Ghidorah. <laughs> my favorite thing about this entire film is how the Ghidorah's head incorporates into the plot i love it honestly it's i know so it's ridiculous my favorite and i love it my favorite thing i even think it's that ridiculous i, I I'll, I'll we'll talk about this when we get there uh, there are rules yeah and they follow them i think but, so because if i have one thing about godzilla's like change in personality and it's actually more a complaint about king of the monsters because king of the monsters actually kind of did this this is what started it is that in 2014 godzilla you know godzilla was presented as always this force of nature that's a balance of power when something steps out of line whether that be kaiju whether that be humans whatever he's there to sort of restore balance the second film kind of you know king of the monsters kind of introduced this idea of the alpha and that you know he cares you know he has to be alpha now it never bothered me too much in the film itself because it was more like, well, the reason why he doesn't want Ghidorah to be alpha is because Ghidorah is going to like make everyone evil and like ruin the earth. So right. it's a noble. And he's not from the cause. earth, so he's not part of the balance. But in this film, because it's just like, oh, Godzilla's going to come after Kong no matter what because he, you know, because Kong's a potential alpha threat. I'm like, but if Kong's not trying to fight, ancient rivalry, right? Yeah, yeah, the ancient rivalry. Like, I hate that so much. Like, piss off with the ancient rivalry bullshit. <laughs> it, it's just. It's basically, we need, and this is actually, if you're going to compare it to Batman v Superman, it's like, we need Batman to hate Superman so the plot can happen. So we're just going to have him hate Superman. <laughs> so here's the same thing. We're going to have a reason for Godzilla to want to hate Kong, and that just it's just there so we can do the thing. And that's it. <laughs> so. So for the record, I think that's, that's that complaint's less about me loving Godzilla and thinking they're doing something stupid with them, and more just that I just don't think it it feels just like, a, like an excuse. It's like, well, we just have to give him a, a thing so that he'll mm-hmm. come and fight Kong. 
Uh, but we do learn a few things on the water before they, they just show up. Like, uh, Kong actually knows sign language. He's been chatting to the girl. How how Rebecca Hall never noticed this when there's cameras everywhere in the uh, the, the Kong Truman show. Uh, <laughs> he's got pretty big hands. You know, I'm just saying, there's a pretty big hands. Like, uh, how are you missing him doing sign language? Yeah. <laughs> what, oh, that's the other thing. The little girl's like uh, the last native of the island like yeah they all got wiped out in the storm or something yeah that was a pretty dark thing to just casually throw in there all those characters we spent time with in kong Skull island you know real arson was taking the photos of yeah they're all dead well, okay. so that's a bit of a shame but uh what's that so wiped out not even by like spider bamboo <laughs> <laughs> or whatever the creatures are yeah, I was wondering, they should have mentioned something about, like, how did it defend the dome from the actual creatures on the island that are just everywhere? <laughs> like, <is> it... <laughs> well, I, they said, like, the Skull Island is basically, like, a microcosm of the, of the, um, the Hollow Earth. Like, there's just all these monsters from there on that island. Of the Kevin Bacon Earth, yes. Oh, like Hollow Man? That was a joke, <laughs> yes. I get it. <laughs> Funny. Um, All right, don't be so patronizing. It was a dumb joke. It was meant to get a, a dumb little pop, and you, <laughs> you just drug it through the mud. Well, I mean, you're so critical of the humor in these films, so. <laughs> I'm not a screenwriter who's getting paid to write a big budget movie. I'm thinking that's of things true. off the cusp. That's true, that's true. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what's that saying? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what my overall point was. I'm sure it was great. So make your cousin with the Hollow Earth. You were sitting at Thomas Skull Island. Yeah, but I don't remember where I was going with that. Okay, well, I can't help you. <laughs> I can get you as far as you <laughs> went. I can't really take you much further. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, but obviously uh, there's some you know nice moments in the rain where the little girl's talking to Kong and uh, they're all freaking out because like, wait, is he talking? Can he communicate? What? Uh, but, I like that is home. Yes. Uh, <laughs> he says one word. But of course, uh, Godzilla does show up, uh, and there's a lot of like battle, like hell, you know, like you know, carrier ships and like warships surrounding. They've got a big escort, and uh, which it basically just serves for something for Kong to jump across <laughs> later on when he starts doing some proper platform. Well, at one point, Kong and Godzilla both climb onto a carrier yes. that's somehow supporting both of their weights, and that, that was a great scene. That was a great shot. It was a great scene. I think I would love to actually hear someone uh, who has the science brain to, like, given how big and how much they must weigh, if this ship could even remotely take the, the weight of them. No. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I don't think so, but... But part of me wants to I don't think so. give them a little bit of benefit of the doubt and be like... Like, maybe it should have been, like, sinking a little bit as they were doing it. <laughs> like, just like it's... Well, I mean, everything, like, explodes afterwards anyway. I think yes. I don't think the carrier lasts very long, because as soon as Kong jumps on it, like, you, you get this really cool perspective shot of, like, a, a jet that's taking off, and you see behind him Kong on the other side of the carrier. Yes. Uh, the only interaction that Kong has with a plane in this one versus the original King Kong is that he picks up a jet and throws it at Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, he throws it like a, he throws it like a dart. Yeah. And the, the pilot's like, oh, eject, eject, eject. <laughs> Mid throw. That was funny. I'm that, glad we got his POV shot. <laughs> that was good. Um, honestly, yeah, most of the fighting is good here. Uh, you know, because Kong punches Godzilla in the face a couple of times. Uh, I yeah. love, it was in the trailer, but I love Godzilla uh, blasting his atomic breath through the, the bottom of the ship. And Kong legitimately jumps off in the exact same pose that John McClane jumps off the top of yes. Nakatomi Plaza and Die Hard. It looks like Die Hard. It's the exact same pose. <laughs> this is the this is the part of the trailer where I went, oh, this movie's gonna be bad. Yeah, it's not the <laughs> it's not the best thing Kong does though. I'll just I'll spoil this for later. The best thing Kong does in this movie that made me smile and go, you know what, Kong just gained the point with me is when he pops his shoulder back in like Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon 2. <laughs> he goes up to a building and goes like this, ooh, and puts his shoulder back in. <laughs> Kong knows how to fight. He knows how to keep fighting. He is brutal. Yeah. Uh, but it is worth mentioning, Godzilla wins this fight. I just want to <laughs> put that out there. He does. But he's also 
in the water. So that was kind of expected, right? Cause that's true. That's just, that's just, he's uh... in his element versus Kong. Kong is stuck on uh, just a, a number of ships that he could jump off of. And in the beginning, he's chained up, which is great because when, um, when uh, Godzilla first breaches and causes the ship to go all Poseidon adventure and then Kong's still strapped to it, like that was a really like yeah, that was a it, tense way to start the fight yeah it's well upside down that Skarsgård manages to flip the switch that releases the the chain so that mm-hmm. Kong can like do his thing and yeah Kong- but like everybody's drowning and stuff yeah. <laughs> and including Kong like Kong's drowning and stuff yeah Kong can drown Kong you know, he's, he's got some pretty big weaknesses I mean Godzilla can just swim for as much as he wants he's good underwater yeah. here's what he's doing yeah uh, yeah, that, that stuff's good, but it is noble here. I mean, because obviously, I, you know, I'm cracking some Batman v Superman jokes and comparisons, and mainly because I want to build up to a big one later. But uh, as much as I was, you know, comparing it and saying there's some similarities in the sense that Godzilla just needs a reason to hate Kong, right? And I don't really buy it. It's just, just kind of there as a reason. Um, I do want to point out this, though. And this is, a, this is a, an indictment of Batman v Superman. This is a, a positive point in this movie's favor, is that... Despite that Godzilla does this and Godzilla needs to have to fight Kong, he doesn't actually, like, go for the kill. He's quite happy, like, when he sees that Kong is defeated and that the humans stand down and they power down the ship, he accepts this as, okay, I've made my point. I'm top dog, and Kong knows that now, and yeah. I'll, I'll leave. Like, I have no reason to, like, kill him. Whereas, in Batman v Superman, if you recall, Batman, until the word Martha was uttered, <laughs> was very intent on murdering Superman. So, just... Without. There is a spear of destiny or whatever in this one too, though, right? Oh, there is. <laughs> in a way. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, so they, they fly Kong the rest of the way with some helicopters to Antarctica. And a big net. And a big net. Yeah. Um, I'll, say, I'll save the uh, the plot at least to make a Godzilla for separate, because it's, you know, it's a very separate subplot. Uh, so, basically, Skarsgård had a brother that died. This was mentioned earlier on. Uh, that is actually another thing with this movie is so many characters only ever meet in one scene or never meet at all like, you know, the, the group from the, the, the secondary plot never meet this group from the first plot mm-hmm. outside of standing next to each other at the very end like, that's the only time they're ever in the same, same scene together but um, which isn't necessarily a problem it's just it's just interesting like how separate the characters are and how little they interact with each other or even know that there's like because part of me i think almost expected like a thing where some of the characters who are pro godzilla would encounter the characters who are pro kong and they would kind of like have to reason out with each other in some way as well not fight i thought i was expecting a fight but the idea they would interact i thought would be interesting but they never did that uh, mm. but uh so yes so this is where the movie gets i'll just say stupid right and i don't mean that in a harsh way right i kind of love how willing it is to go stupid but it does get really stupid. So, Skarsgård brother we hear died because he tried to pilot a mission to go to Hollow Earth, which, as we see in like their sort of maps and diagrams earlier on, is literally like a sort of mini planet inside Earth. And they also established that it's uh, inverted. So, and what that means is, is that when you go through it, the gravity reverses and the bottom of Hollow Earth is actually... Uh, on the outside of this sort of sphere, uh, meaning that, and we see like a good example of this later, that when there's a hole created, that, you know, like if you go down when you're inside the hollow earth, you'll eventually come up through the ground, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, on, on earth. Uh, so they give us like a tragic brother backstory, which almost feels, again, just kind of needless. It, it never really adds anything to it, really. Um, but... The reason why Damon Bashir he thinks they can do it now is because he's got a fancy new little ship, and it is a straight up a science fiction like spacecraft, uh, and this is straight up journey to the center of the earth style mm-hmm. plot that we're doing. What really got me though is that on the way to what is effectively a portal that Godzilla or uh, sorry that Kong is able to open, um, is that there's all these like structures, like that are holding like a, this like rift apart to get to it, and all I could think was like. How long have they been building this shit? And what is all this? Like, because it, it, it almost looked like uh, I don't think there is, but it almost looked like there were like buildings with inhabitants, and it looked like there was lights on them. And I was like, "What is this?" I, you know, I was sort of thinking it, maybe it was the same thing that was implied that built the like Godzilla's little cave because he definitely had like um, some sure, sort sure. of ziggurat or something where he was staying. 
<laughs> in his little area okay, underneath yeah, the could, water. I could see that. So I, I was thinking maybe there were civilizations inside the Hollow Earth also that just that worshipped, um, you know, Kong or whoever. Okay. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe it's not man-made, maybe it's like something, but the reason why it never occurred to me that is because it's on the, on our side. It, you know, it wasn't in the Hollow Earth yet, this was like the... Oh, you mean like the there. technology stuff, like the big entrance that they had, cave going in? Well, not just the cave, but I mean, when they're flying through, before they get to the actual portal, there's all these like towers that are like, ho like, everywhere when they're flying through this big area, going there. Uh, mm. But eventually they go through what's effectively a portal. One of the big questions I had when they get there, though, is uh, what is the light source? Because it's like daytime. Uh, yeah. And I don't really... Earth's core, I guess. I don't I have don't an know. answer for this. <laughs> um, I saw one theory online that I kind of liked, is that this isn't really on Earth. That this is The portal actually takes them to another planet. And it seems like it, it, it feels like they're in like another dimension or something. Yeah, it doesn't it feel does. like... Um, now, like um, it, it's not Jules Verne. Yeah. Admittedly, I mean that doesn't really explain when they like they they literally make a hole later on that they go up, so that, that doesn't really track completely. But they Godzilla does. Godzilla does, yes. <laughs> I, I say they, I mean the filmmakers make a hole. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so, so that, that, yeah, so this is where like you have to leave every piece of sign saying your head has to be left at the, at the door because this is. Just, I mean, the one thing I will say, I, I, as much as I, I don't like some of the music, because I feel like it's, like, annoyingly, like, going close to Godzilla music, but not really doing it, I, I will say I like the almost Blade Runner-sounding synth of the yeah, Hollow Earth. Yeah, it was very synth in there. I, I yeah. noticed it, too. It felt very otherworldly and very sci-fi. And it went with the spaceship that they're flying around in, and I was like, oh, man, this is, like, all of a sudden feels super sci-fi, like, in so many ways. But, like, retro sci-fi. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Godzilla fights a random, you know, beast that's there uh that comes after he ends up drinking uh, the blood kong, yeah oh sorry kong yeah i keep doing that i keep flipping the names uh kong and he drinks the 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 blood of the, the head after he's yeah, killed he's like, it mm, this is some food maybe i do belong here good fruit here <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's a whole scene where like he floats through the sky and like touches like the statue the big hand that it's like mm -hmm. you know 16th, 16th chapel kind of <laughs> moment you know <laughs> right I like that. Um, I also thought of the Sistine Chapel. Uh, um, the I, I actually I like the design of those dragon bat things too. I thought they were cool. Mm. And their like way of trying to kill Kong was to suffocate him with their wing. Like that was kind of a neat. That was neat. It was and short, it, but I, like. And then the ones we see about later design. on are more bird-like, and they've got like beaks. I thought they kind of look cool as well. Yeah, they almost look like like turkeys. But like turkeys that eat humans. They're really big turkeys, yeah. <laughs> or um, there's like these crab things that come out of the ground too at one mm. point. I, I like the creature designs. Like, you're right. Like, it's it's super dumb, but like, I enjoy everything I watched in it. <laughs> I, will, I will say this. I will say this. Is that it's maybe a missed opportunity not to have a cameo of a recognizable, like, kaiju from you know an old godzilla movie here because i kind of was expecting something yeah because you, you could have you could have thrown any of them in here and it would have been fine because oh hey we're in mm -hmm. hollow earth this is where all the kaiju live oh there's there's a uh, i don't know gigan or something I don't know. <laughs> maybe he'd look too yeah stupid. something that's yeah. not been used yeah that I mean, was a minor thing it's not, i'm not really I'm, I'm bothered i mean by even it, in but... king of the monsters we saw that there are more kaiju wandering around that you know we've never seen before mm -hmm. in any of the other films so maybe like have them have one of those that we recognize you know yeah have the mammoth ape yeah i mean i joked about seeing the skull crawler earlier but i actually kind of appreciate that there's some consistency in the same way that we mm -hmm. saw muto in the pack at the end of uh care of the monsters just to sort of say oh hey these these aren't just one-offs there are others of these species that exist kind of thing yeah um but yeah so they find the the big sort of like cave uh, slash castle or whatever you want to call it and mm -hmm. so we haven't even said what they're looking for. So basically, he obviously doesn't say this to uh, Skarsgård specifically what he's going to use use it for, other than just we're going to save humanity, blah, blah, blah. But they're looking for an energy source. The energy source, as it turns out, is to power Mechagodzilla because no human power source can power him for more than a couple minutes. <laughs> and he... So they're looking for this energy source and they're trying to find it. And Kong goes into the this chamber and he sees a throne and he sees like a statue of like someone who looks like him. He sees, you know, he sees a 
like a, 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 I don't want to say a Kong, it's not like a Kong's the species, but, you know, for lack of a better term. And mm. he picks up this axe, all right? That's buried into the skull of some other Godzilla-like creature yes. that had died a long time ago. He picks up this axe, and I have no problem with the axe existing because it's, it's very makeshift. In fact, I also like the detail that the blade looks like a fin off of a Godzilla creature. It looks like mm. something off of Godzilla's I didn't notice, back. But yeah, you're uh, right. And it's sort of wrapped onto like a big stick, and you know, it's just a, a made axe. It's fine. Um, but then it started glowing, and I was like, "Oh God, it's the axe! Oh, how is it the axe?" And admittedly, I misread this a little bit in the first viewing because I was a little bit distracted. Uh, it made a bit more sense to me in the second view, as much as this can make sense anyway. <laughs> uh, which is the 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 base of this structure, uh, like the energy they're looking for. Like this, this can literally. This is literally the energy that is inside Godzilla, and mm -hmm. this piece on the axe can literally be charged with Godzilla energy, which is important for yeah. later. Like an iPhone. Yeah, because he, he he puts it into a slot, and it starts to light up, um, and then the camera sort of goes up, and we see that there's almost like a, a Godzilla s like sort of design going around in a circle, uh, right. for all their weapons, all the charged pieces of tech go, um, and. It's like, okay, it's that. It's in the floor. Okay, they get it. Well, this is this is the weird part to me is that they don't actually need to send a physical sample back to uh like the lab or anything. They just upload what the molecular structure is or whatever, and they're able to just recreate it instantly, like on Earth. Like cool. I mean, okay. <laughs> I guess we have that technology. Sure. <laughs> uh, the 3D printer whipped it up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'll go with it. Um. And there's a bit of, you know, some monsters attack. Uh, Isaac Gonzalez basically starts a lot of chaos uh, and monsters attack. There's a great shot, though, because she tries to fly off like a coward in her little ship and basically leaves the, the you know, the main characters for dead. And there's a great shot. And it, it kind of reminds you of the helicopter stuff from Kong Skull Island, but where Kong, mm -hmm. like, grabs it and there's a shot from inside of him looking inside. Of just, it's just his eye just kind of being like, oh, you sneaky little bastards. And then he just crushes it with his hand and it just explodes and that's it. Yeah. It's, it's like the 1930s Kong. Yeah. I kill humans too. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing it wrong. She, she kind of like pretty much had it coming at this point, given her actions. Oh yeah, she's been yeah. unlikable since she showed up. <laughs> so, of course. Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and of course, uh, but when obviously when he activates the axe, this activates Godzilla on the other end and he makes the big hole. Uh, but so, he just atomic breaths a hole to the core of the earth. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like that it takes a little bit of time though. It it, it takes a, a good five minutes to reach the the, the you know the hollow earth. It's, it's like yeah, he's, he's blasting away at this hole for a while to, to get to. Yeah, it. he should be wore out after. <laughs> yes, and, but it takes a while for for Kong to climb it too. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, so. And the little girl's with him, of course, and they give us a reason because because Kong's bonded to her, so so he'll t basically the girl convinces him to go in because he may have family there. You know that's that's what convinces him to even go in the Hollow Earth in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll we'll jump over to the podcaster plot, which is Millie Bobby Brown meets up with a friend who's just you know randomly the kid from who has a van, who has a van. <laughs> uh, well, t to be fair, he does mention that he sort of took it from his older brother or something like that at the start. He has like a thing like yeah. Like, you know, my, my brother's going to be law, mad. Freaking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, And they go off to try and find this podcast guy because she but she believes what he's saying, which is that something's provoking Godzilla. Mm -hmm. uh, and they go and find him. They find him because he's a clean freak who buys, like, obscene amounts of bleach. So they, they go to the one store, I guess... This is the first store they tried, or so, mm -hmm. I, get, I don't know, uh, but, and they say, so who buys all the bleach? And they bribe the, the shop owner, and he's like, oh, I know that guy, yeah. Uh, <laughs> basically. Although, I'm not convinced that uh, the, the, the kid was actually trying to bribe him, or if he actually just wanted the candy bars that were being offered. <laughs> I think he actually wanted candy. <laughs> <laughs> but the way, the way he slapped it down on the table and says, yeah, we'll take some candy, it kind of felt like, you could take it as that's how he's trying to sound cool. Like, he's like, yeah, we'll take some candy. <laughs> like Right. Like, also, like, <laughs> or, or it could be interpreted like, yeah, I'm, oh, here's a little, a little something for you for yes. that information. 
Yes. <laughs> but he doesn't give the location unless they buy a fish. I think he said. I think that was the line. A live fish, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I, I was almost disappointed when it cut to the next scene of them going to the guy's apartment that they weren't holding they like, a fish. They didn't have like a goldfish in yeah. the bag or something. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been like a thing. He could have been holding a goldfish the whole movie. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so they team up, uh, Millie Bobby Brown and uh, uh, Henry, the, Ryan Tyree Henry. I'm just trying to remember his last name so I can refer to him quickly. Was, uh, was his name Bernie or something? Bernie's his character name, yeah. Uh, he, like, they bond because they're both conspiracy nuts. Again, this is something that is out of nowhere, relatively speaking, for her. It's because it, nothing, none of this was even remotely hinted at in the last one. <laughs> but, uh, so they're, they, they bond. Uh, and they decide to go back to the, the 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 plant that was destroyed, you know, the labs that were destroyed at the start of the movie, because he wants to get to the the, the basement level thirty three. Which, by the way, that's a lot of sub levels. That's a lot of digging <laughs> to keep building this. But as we find out very soon in this movie, because this is something that made me laugh when we got towards the end. So obviously, uh, Godzilla goes to Hong Kong because that's where the, the other lab is that's building Mecha Godzilla. And that's where he makes the hole, so that's where Kong pops out. And then, in turn, so that's also where the other character's in the little ship, because Skarsgård flies them through the hole, and they pop out in Hong Kong. I thought it was really funny that Millie Bobby Brown's group also ended up in Hong Kong through a completely different, ultra-silly sci-fi idea. Mm-hmm. And this is one that apparently human beings have built, which is that this Apex company have literally built a pneumatic-style tube which goes from Florida <laughs> to Hong Kong in, what, an hour or something like that? I don't know. Some of them uh, took a nap, so... Uh, maybe some, longer, I, I okay. know time has gone by where they got bored enough to the excitement okay, that yeah, they took okay. a nap. Okay, maybe it's more more like a plane ride where it's like a good 12 hours or something. I don't know. But, like, <laughs> it's regardless, yeah. it's, it's a little pod on, in an underground tunnel that goes all the way from Florida. It's a secret tunnel that goes around the entire Earth. Yeah. You think they could have just made their stuff a bit closer? <laughs> <laughs> and because 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 they just stick into it because it's like a, it's like a cargo. Even if they just put thing. it on like the the west coast instead of the east coast, would have been a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I guess maybe they didn't want to have San Francisco go through that that again that experience. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That, that, I mean, to be fair though, if you were going to pick a state where if a kaiju attack has to happen, would Florida not be the first choice? You may as well. Let's sacrifice Florida. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. Florida, maybe Texas. Maybe Texas. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but Texas isn't exactly on the coast as much, really, is it? <laughs> so, you know. Uh, I mean, it's on the, the, the Gulf, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, but Florida's got, I mean, there's a lot of access to Florida from the war. <laughs> like, Definitely. Florida's right in there. Uh, I wonder how much in comparison to Texas. It's probably more in Florida, but like, uh, there's quite a bit of Texas that's along the water. Yeah. Just not the ocean. Yeah. But Texas is also a lot bigger, so if you compare it to the percentage of like the, the border, it's probably mm-hmm. tiny compared to uh, Florida. Probably. <laughs> anyway... So yeah, they end up there, but I mean, they, they discover the main important thing, which is that they've got Ghidorah's head, and because Ghidorah, and they explain this, mm-hmm. I love and al- it. although I thought the reason, like, I didn't think it needed a reason, they, they could have just said Ghidorah's heads communicated telepathically, I'd have been fine with that, but they threw in a line where, where Bernie's like, because he had really long necks, they had to communicate telepathically, I'm like, what? <laughs> Why is that a reason? <laughs> That's not a reason. <laughs> because their heads are so far away from each other. <laughs> but they don't have, like, if they had a shared brain or something, it would have to be at the base of the neck, right? Well, no, we know they're all different brains because they all acted differently. We know that. Yeah, I mean, but some some animals that are, like, or, like, dinosaurs that were so, so big mm-hmm. actually had, like, a secondary brain in order to be able to keep other things running. Like, the Stegosaurus has, like, famously, like, a, a butt brain. <laughs> for, for uh, the other half of its body, basically, so that they can all function. Famously, um, you say. Famously. <laughs> yeah, famously. <laughs> yeah. So, so they, they they encounter that, uh, 
which is, and obviously as soon as they, they, they showed this because obviously at this point they've established uh, Mechagodzilla is man-made right it's, a, it's a something that a man's controlling as soon as they show that they're using the skull the, the, from the end of uh, Kay of the Monsters that's what they're using to communicate with it I immediately went well I know why Mechagodzilla is going to go bad at the end of the movie now because it's going to be Ghidorah <laughs> who's actually inside there. It's going to be Ghidorah who's actually I controlling it. I, I do. This is my, this is the best idea in the whole movie is that this is so like, like you could see this coming out of Japan for like, yes. another Godzilla movie, right? Yes. This, this is the, so like the, Power Rangers adjacent or something. This is wonderful. I love that it's the spirit of Ghidorah, at least one of the heads of Ghidorah. He's back. Is controlling Mechagodzilla. And that's why Mechagodzilla is is just full on evil. I love that. I love that. It's just it adds some context to it. Like when Mechagodzilla starts like just killing millions of people, it's like mm -hmm. that's Ghidorah doing that. That's cool, mm -hmm. right? Now yeah. the, the the one disappointing part of this is that it does mean that Mecha King Ghidorah is off the table, technically. Right. <laughs> technically, right. so uh, that, but that that's a little disappointing. But I mean, I, we're probably never going to get to that. You can't get everything. Yes. I'll accept this. This, this. this was a fun twist was, on that. It was a surprise that we even got Mechagodzilla in this film, honestly. I mean, uh, we saw it in the trailer, which was a bit disappointing that they would put mm -hmm. that in the trailer. Although, how do you keep this a secret? But especially, it would have been a really great reveal. Especially when they're making toys. Like, I mean, that's just it. Like, it's going to be out there. There's yeah. nothing you can do. Uh, but, yeah, so, so they, they find the Ghidorah head and uh, they then stumble into the test room where they put on Mecha Ghidorah for a, or sorry, Mecha Godzilla for a test, and they release a skull crawler. So they almost get killed by a skull crawler until Mecha Godzilla, uh, controlled by the guy still, steps in. Um, so that's important, right? But then they get captured and they're just like sort of held captive for the till things go down. Um, and when they find the energy source down below, they send it back up. Uh, evil Lex Luthor man is like swirling his whiskey. He's like, ah, yes, finally. Now we will be the true apex predators once again. Man is Titan. <laughs> and, but, you know, I think the idea is essentially that this is enough energy now that the Ghidorah's head actually is able to like function fully and it connects to Mechagodzilla and that's, that's basically it. Uh, but before we get to them turning this on properly, because it takes a little bit of time for them to manufacture the <coughs> the energy source, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to have some just straight up Godzilla Kong combat. And, in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, which is notably a very colourful city at night because they've got a lot yeah, of LED lights. They've got a lot of, you know, uh, so many of the skyscrapers and buildings have like outline lights of like different colours. Uh, so it feels very futuristic, even though I believe that's just more or less it accurate. Is, yeah. yeah, that's just. I've been to Hong Kong. It's one of my favorite cities, and it is like, yeah, it's like every show or every night is like a show for just the people who live there. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's what I, I was in Hong Kong. I heard it from. I think it was. I think it was Shanghai. I heard this for. But if you want to know what it feels like to live in Blade Runner, just go to Shanghai. There's no flying cars, but other than that, it feels like Blade Runner. And I'm like, all right. Well, yeah. Well, they also have the air pollution problem, <laughs> Shanghai, that they have in Blade Runner. <laughs> Hey, authentic. If you want that, that's authenticity. <laughs> <laughs> Don't turn down authenticity. Right. <laughs> Maybe we're the gas master. <laughs> Just in case. Just stay inside. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, the face here are good. Now, there is, like, there's a funny thing here where um, Godzilla kind of inadvertently saves them down below because it's his breath coming through and making the hole that kind of saves them at one point from one of the big bird creatures. But when, when the ship eventually comes up, there's some nice shots where the ship kind of does a sort of loop around the atomic breath. Because they, cause it's, when they first come up, they're kind of disorientated and the, the ship's kind of going at an angle and they, they end up mm -hmm. like getting really close to everything. But there's a lot of good action here with the fight itself. Because, uh, you know, Kong's got his axe, he's throwing his axe at Godzilla. Godzilla's like ripping it out of his like side and like throwing it at a building. Uh, I laughed quite a bit. Godzilla sort of charges at Kong at one point and his head gets stuck in a building when Kong moves out of the way. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of this stuff. There's tail whipping. There's punching. Uh, Godzilla's scratching Kong, Kong's chest. Kong's like, uh, like swinging off of all the buildings and stuff. Like yeah. we get, we get Kong on top of a skyscraper, <laughs> multiple. Of course, of course. Why wouldn't you? Um, yeah, that, uh, that chest scratching scene was gnarly. 
Godzilla straight up does a judo throw on Kong at one point because mm -hmm. Kong's kind of on his back. He just sort of goes like that and flips him. Uh, it's 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 neat. It's a full on wrestling match, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's quality stuff. And I, I love that Godzilla immediately goes to use the breath, and it, the, the first part of the fight is very much Kong having to try and figure out how to avoid the breath because at first yeah. he sort of grabs and his he gets mouth. Burned yeah, on his at back. first he sort of grabs his mouth at first, almost like he's going to go for the T Rex kill. And it just sort of yeah. makes the, the breath fire up into the air, right, a little bit. But then there's a whole sequence where, and I love this shot, it's Kong jumping from building to building, coming towards us, and you just see the the, the beam of the atomic breath coming towards them from behind. It's just this mm -hmm. beautiful, like, chaotic shot. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. And so there's a, li there's a line here, because cause Kong sort of does the big thing, where it's in the trailer where he jumps at him with the axe and hits him in the face as he's got using the breath. And it knocks them both down, and Kong gets up first. And it cuts to Skarsgård, who says, I guess round two goes to Kong. On the second time I watched this, though, what stuck out to me about this is that we cut away to the villain for a quick scene, and then we come back, and then Godzilla and Kong are both back up again. And I'm like, well, the fight wasn't yeah, really over. They didn't count to ten. Yeah. So. It's the, like, <laughs> He's I not get, out yet. I get they wanted to do the whole thing where it's like best out of, best two out of three, right? So the idea is they both win a fight and then Godzilla wins ultimately. Uh, but really, this wasn't a separate fight. This was just like a slight pause in the one big fight. <laughs> Which sounds like I'm picking hairs, but it kind of felt like when I watched it a second time, I'm like, this is just the same fight still. <laughs> like, there's, there's been no time Yeah, difference. but when you watched it the first time, it, it yeah. felt like the end of round two. Yeah. Because uh, they both like were spent. Yes. And then Kong gets up first and he's about to leave and then... Well, the bell didn't ring yet. Yes. So. And Godzilla's like, how dare you do that to me? I'm and just having steps you. on him. <laughs> and just stomps the shit out of him, uh, puts his foot on his chest and like, crushes his chest. Uh, and it's like a proper defeat. And uh, yeah. actually, one of the things I didn't mention earlier is like, after the first time he hits him with atomic breath, because he gets, he gets blasted in the chest, it cuts back to the Godzilla's reaction shot and he legit smiles. He's like, <laughs> like he has this uh, like, smell in his face. He's like, "Yeah, come at me, bitch." Like, that's, that's, that's his, that's his face. Um, but this is the scene that made me laugh, and I do actually enjoy it in the scene. But you know, ever since this has all all been we've all been building to this, right? Ever since Batman v Superman, the joke has been Mothra. Why did you say that name? And, you know, as a, as a as a parody of the Martha scene, right? That scene actually kind of happens in this movie. After, so after he's, he's got his foot in his chest, right, he comes down, because he's got his foot in his chest, he takes it off and he leans down, and he kind of roars in his face to assert his dominance. And then Kong kind of roars back, kind of in defiance, but not in a way to say that I'm getting back up and I'm going to win, just in a way of, like, I'm never going to bow. Like, you win, right? Mm -hmm. You're better. Like, you've proven that, and damn right he did. He did prove it. He's better. But... Okay. Right? But Kong's like, no, no. <laughs> so... Like and because because he's always going to like leave at this point. He's like one. He's not going to kill again. He leaves him alive. He doesn't actually like, go out of his way to kill him. He's made his point. Like no, I win. You're down. This is over. But this scene and the way it's shot, the way Kong's lying there, the way Godzilla's standing over him and then leans down, and then the way Godzilla roars first and then Kong roars back, it is almost at least in my memory, beat for beat, the Martha scene. Superman's down, Batman's over the top, he's got the spear. No? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I, all I could think in this scene was Martha. <laughs> or Mothra, even. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I, thought, I got a kick out of it. Uh, and I, saw, I, I saw people afterwards making the joke on Twitter, but I legitimately was thinking about it during the scene, because it was just, and clearly other people are noticing it as well. Uh, um. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't notice that, but... Uh... I just thought it was a good fight, and I felt sorry for Kong. That was a good fight. That was a good. I, I was too busy. I, I'm sorry they didn't have any like tables, ladders, and chairs involved. But other than that, it was pretty good. I mean, they, they did put each other <laughs> through some buildings. I, I think the buildings could, could, could can actually stand in for both tables and ladders. Bizarrely, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, nothing chair like. Uh, Pacific Rim did that with a ship, but uh, right, nothing like yeah. that in this one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's my only. That's my only wrestling joke. I don't know wrestling. Hey, that's, hey, that was, that's quality. That's, that's solid. That's solid. Uh, um, <laughs> I, I, what I like here, actually, is... Uh, I, I love that I... Just by happenstance, I shared a meme with Tara the other day, 
and she didn't get it. And the reason why she didn't get it is because she had never seen the original King Kong versus Godzilla from the sixties, mm-hmm. uh, or or more specifically, had seen the clip or the gif of the moment, which is Kong trying to shove a tree into Godzilla's mouth. Which they recreate in this movie. He does it with the axe. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Godzilla, Godzilla's trying to use his breath. And one of the things Kong does in this little sequence of things to try and stop him from using the breath is he shoves the bottom of the axe into his mouth for us. And it's very much that moment. <laughs> uh, so Adam Wired clearly knew what he was doing with that. He was like, no, I'm, I'm putting right. a reference to that in here. Oh, He's that's go- cool. I think that's neat. I was into it. Because uh, because the, the fighting all starts off at night, of course, and then by the time Godzilla's won, it's kind of morning, and mm-hmm. this is when the idiot villain turns on his Mecha Godzilla, and right away, like the you know Sarazawa who's in the chair, and this is the other thing, like they introduce Sarazawa's son, and you know you could probably count the scenes he's in, in your, with your fingers. Three. Is it is it, is it just is it just three? <laughs> ah, I think it was three. Think it's just three. I think it might technically be slightly more than that, but I, I will totally agree that it's probably only three important scenes. Because <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I think it's more than three because there's a couple of scenes where he's kind of in the background because he's there with uh, the main dude, you know, the main boss. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. His name it's... is William something. Are you the boss you're trying to name? William... So... No. You have it's... IMDB open. I you're do. helping me. I just think this is funny. I'm just, especially since you're wrong. <laughs> okay, it's not William. It's not William? What, what's his name? Walter. <laughs> oh, it was close. <laughs> Walter uh, Simmons. Walter Simmons, okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the billing in this movie is all over the place. Not only, Lance Reddick is billed higher than him, for a start. Uh, but... Weirdly, Isaac Gonzalez is built higher than him, and I feel like, I mean, maybe it's actually equal when you actually chalk up the screen time, but I feel like he, he seemed more important in the context of the plot, but I mean, whatever. I think so, yeah. Uh, uh, immediately, Mechagodzilla is taken over by Ghidorah. Uh, I laughed, in a, in a fun way, I appreciated this, uh, like, Sarazawa, his death is like, almost like old school cheesy, like, electrocution, mm-hmm. like, with the blue lightning it all off his body yeah he has like the star trek next generation blue yeah. lightning <laughs> so they're having fun with it i mean that's the thing as much as i can nitpick some stuff in this movie and talk about how silly some of the like the MacGuffin, the the hollow earth and the magic axe and all, all like all this shit that is just nonsense um they clearly it's they're having fun, fun. They, they know what they're doing in terms of they know what sort of dumb movie they're making uh mm-hmm. but yeah so america godzilla kills the bad guy comes out and because it's, it's essentially Ghidorah's brain it's like well I'm gonna just F everyone up because I'm Ghidorah that's what I do I'm the king yeah <laughs> and he starts like trampling it through everywhere what did you think what did you think of the design of Mecha Godzilla um actually at first I didn't really like him I thought he looked kind of scrawny but I mm-hmm. liked him when he was versus Godzilla yeah I, I think um yeah, I, I, at first I wasn't sure either. I think in action he was pretty solid, which is, I guess, yeah. is the most important thing. Um, I, I guess one of the weird things about Mecha Godzilla is that it's impossible not to think about the Dragon Zord, which obviously was copying Godzilla or Mecha Godzilla. Uh, but uh, like, it's not quite the Dragon Zord, but it's it's not bad. It's not. Bad. <laughs> it has he. Oh, I mean, he doesn't have like the the girth of Godzilla yes. in the face, so it it seems a little like a toy at first or something. Mm. Um. But, uh, but I did really like him in action. Like it makes said. him like more he, uh, when he's fighting, he looks good. It makes him more mobile though, because he's a bit more dexterity. Because he's not as big. Yeah, chunky. plus you know less metal. That's good. <laughs> True. Yeah. yeah. Uh, still probably weighs an absolute ton though. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because uh, uh, there's a, there's a whole thing here where so Godzilla's walking off. The sun has come up, but then he sees Mecha Godzilla doing things, and of course Godzilla is actually still a hero, despite the fact that the movie's kind of like been away from that for a bit. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's like, oh, I can't let this happen. All right, I need to go and... Cause, but that's the thing. Technically, it's not a Titan. Although, it kind of is because Ghidorah's in there, I suppose, in a way. Then maybe he can sense that. Maybe maybe Godzilla yeah. knows that's that bastard Ghidorah somehow well, back from the dead. I, I was sort of thinking that maybe that's why Godzilla was attacking the other bases in the first place, was because he could sense Ghidorah's presence. Yeah, 
that's what I thought too. Like, I think like Millie Bobby Brown kind of says something like that weird. Uh, she phrases like, "Oh, they're trying to replace him," and again, it, it almost tries to play it off like it's his ego <laughs> in a weird way. But I kind of read it more as, "Yeah, he can sense Ghidorah. Like they're, they're doing yeah. stuff with Ghidorah, and not and also skull corals and whatever else they've got that they've been collecting." Like if they're using Ghidorah's like brain, yeah, transference, whatever. Like maybe he he can pick up on that. Yeah, this goes back. This actually does go back to 2014, which that I like is that you know he's all about restoring the balance, and this is a case of the balance that needs to be restored is the humans. Like this company, this this businessman is messing with forces that he should not be touching. So mm-hmm. you know, they, you know, cannot you know. Humans himself. are not on top. We need to just accept that. Yeah, uh, we must accept that we are not in control of nature, and also let them fight. <laughs> Whereas Sarazawa's son is, let me fight. I want to be in the fight. <laughs> I want to be the titan. <laughs> let me Pacific Rim this, yeah. <laughs> no, he actually, he got he got confused. He thought he thought he was in Breaking Bad because he wanted to be like, I am the kaiju. <laughs> okay. That, come on, come on. That was is, solid. Is that the, I am the one who knocks? Perfect? Yes. Ah, uh, Okay. I am the one who fights. I am the one who <laughs> roars. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, Godzilla goes to fight Mecha Godzilla, and it's not going so well. Uh, the action looks great. Uh, it's it's really solid stuff. It obviously it actually lasts longer than you think it does because it cuts to like the little girl get up to Kong and try. And she says to Kong like, you know, through sign language, Godzilla's not the enemy. That big bastard, the big metal one, he's the enemy. How about, you know, you, you work with him and go and deal with that? Uh, that said, though, Kong's heart is... He needs, a, he needs a, basically a defibrillator. He needs, to, he needs mm-hmm. a jump start. Uh, so, Skarsgård juices up the ship, which apparently can light Vegas for a week, because that's what Isaac Gonzalez was so proud of earlier on. Right. Uh, so, and this is where he calls the little girl a coward. And she's like, <laughs> this prick. How dare he? Uh... <laughs> But it's a sweet enough moment. The way he smells at her afterwards is actually kind of sweet because he means well. Uh, yeah. So they, 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 they give Kong a jolt uh, and Kong gets up and, you know, he saves Godzilla and nobly, did you notice what Mecha Godzilla was trying to do to Godzilla when Kong jumped in to save him? Uh, the same thing that Godzilla did to the Mewtwo's. The Mewtwo's. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes, he was trying to use his, uh, I mean, I don't know what you call it with Mecha Godzilla. I mean, it has, like, laser breath or whatever you want to call it. Uh, sure. Uh, and, and Godzilla's mouth. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he's, go, he's going to do that, and Kong comes in and saves the day. And I love that, you know, after a couple of blows, like, then, you know, he grabbed, you know, Mecha Godzilla grabs Kong, and then it's Godzilla mm-hmm. who, like, saves Kong. And all of a sudden. Yeah, it, it really does take both of them yeah. to take him down. It becomes yeah. this two-on-one fight where they're both, like, grabbing either side of him. And Kong gets the glory of being the one that gets to kill uh, Mecha Godzilla. But what I love about it is that both of them have to show some sign of, like, maybe not trust, but, like, like rely on the other. Like, the idea that... Respect. You know, because Godzilla, like, he, he... Basically, Godzilla's been knocked down again. He's really getting beat up. You know, he's... Obviously, the fight with Kong took a lot out of him. He's fighting Mecha Godzilla. He's getting his ass kicked. Mm-hmm. But he sees that, like... Kong is almost getting the tail, the tail drill in his face. And Godzilla quickly on his feet. And it's, what's important here is that it happened a little bit in the fight by accident earlier, where he used his breath and Godzilla blocked it with the axe and it kind of charged the axe. So Godzilla knowingly blasts everything he's got at the axe to supercharge it, which means that it will cut through Mecha Godzilla. So Kong just starts whipping off limbs and stuff. Um, this is all great stuff. Everything with the, the monsters fighting, I was in. Especially mm-hmm. once it became the team up. It was hard not to pop once like they're working oh, together. Sure. Like it's like And yes. you realize that it's Ghidorah's brain in there. <laughs> all of that stuff is wonderful. The the only critique I have of any of this at this point is actually the stuff that it cuts to with the, the humans. And I know that's just like an obvious complaint, but it's the only time in the movie it really bothered me, is because they've got like a little plot thing happening here where Millie Bobby Brown is just watching. But the other two, right, uh, are trying to, like, see if they can turn off, like, Mecha Godzilla, And he's trying to figure out the password. And it's just a lot of dumb comedy about, like, mm. like going to camp to learn HTML. And then he pours, like, the, the guy's booze, because he's got, he's got booze in a holster. Because, again, he's got a dead wife. We have so many dead relatives in this movie that get mentioned that are, like, 
Billy well, cannot. I mean, Titans exist in this world. <laughs> That's true. But they never. A lot of people are going to die. Yeah, but they never mention it's because of a Titan. They never says why she died. No, that's true. He just goes on about the tap water being <laughs> dodgy, <laughs> trying to control our minds. <laughs> uh, With more docile. that's what the Nazis did, right? Yeah, keep uh, us docile. But they, 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 so it, but it has like a eureka moment. The kid has a eureka moment and pours his booze down the computer, and I'm like, wait, if this turns off Mecha Godzilla, I'm going to be so pissed. And it seems the only thing it really does is cause a slight distraction so that Mecha Godzilla yeah, pauses a, a for a, a second. Yeah, a bit of a surge or something, yeah. Yeah, and that's it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Again, I don't know if I really needed that subplot. Like, it was fine. Like, Godzilla was the one making the save for Kong, and then Kong could kill, kill him with the axe, right? That was the two right. things that were important. Well, um, it gave uh, What's-His-Face a reason to be there other than to give names to everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, that, that was... I, like I, I don't mind that someone called him Mecha Godzilla. I like the. I mean, that kid honestly has the delivery to like say, "Oh, Mecha Godzilla," and call him that. But the fact that they had Bernie say, "It's a Robo Godzilla," and then the kid's like, "No, that's Mecha Godzilla." That made me cringe a little bit. That was your. <laughs> that was your cheesy blockbuster dialogue. I like dialogue. that kid so much, and his accent is so sweet. <laughs> oh, no, I like the actor. I think the kid's great, but uh, yeah, that bothered me a little bit, but. Uh, and because this is where I, this is where I realized because uh, Melly Bobby Brown's dad, right? So Kyle Chandler is actually in Hong Kong because he's actually he still tracks Godzilla. That's still his job. He's still doing that. Yeah. And he's there, and he's just like surprised to find her there too. And it's like, oh, I'm glad you survived. Oh, also, here's this weird man that I tracked down who who she says saved us, and I'm like, he didn't save shit. Did how did he save you? At what point in this movie did he save you? <laughs> I don't remember this happening. Um, I don't remember that either. Yeah. I guess maybe because of his booze. <laughs> he saved us with alcohol, Dad. That's what every father wants to hear <laughs> from his teenage daughter. Uh, this middle-aged man saved you with alcohol. Um, that she found on the internet. That she found on the internet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but obviously, once they're all having their happy hugs and stuff, and Kong's like sitting there. Uh, there's a lot of touch here actually, as he's walking away as a helicopter flies by, and it's like just for scale. You see how. I, if, I, if anything, I will say the one thing about scale is I feel like Kong size felt like it went up and down a little bit in the movie. I don't know if it always felt consistent. Uh, maybe. It's hard to tell with the boats, right? Yeah. Uh, but Godzilla gets, roars and gets back on his feet as he does. And there's like a moment here where it's like, oh, it's a bit of a standoff and all the humans get on edge. And Kong has had his arc and he realizes all he has to do to show Godzilla that we're cool is to make a make it clear that he's not going to fight him and he just throws the axe down and like no we're not doing this like respect <laughs> and godzilla's respect. like he's like yes wise choice <laughs> monkey and then godzilla turns around and there's a great shot of like godzilla walking away from kong where it's like showing godzilla's face and kong's in the background looking at him mm -hmm. uh yeah this is <laughs> walking neat. back into the ocean yes as he does in most of his movies i assume mm-hmm uh and then the end of the movie is just showing that Kong has moved to the Hollow Earth, but now Monarch have a base there now too, but they're, 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 they're like hanging out with Kong and just monitor things and study everything else, I assume. And he gets to roam free again, though. He gets to roam free, and we end with him just sort of jumping up onto a, like a cliff edge or whatever. And uh, I thought actually, I thought the timing of this cut to credits was a bit weird. I wasn't expecting it to cut what it did. It felt a little bit abrupt. It's a minor nitpick, it but it's, you know. Uh, I wonder what Hong Kong's going to do now that there's a big hole in it. <laughs> That's a very good point. Uh, build <laughs> something over it, I guess. Oh, pardon me. Yeah. Uh, so something Come reasonably see thick. the dome. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not like you can just fill it with cement. I mean, <laughs> for, for nope. a start, it'll just come out on the other end. <laughs> this was problem number one. Uh, but... Yeah, I guess just build, like, a big metal, like, you know, ramp over it. <laughs> like, literally. It's, I mean, it's, it was on a road, I think. So just, yeah, just, you know, trucks just go over the ramp. <laughs> just don't go in. It's like, it's just road work. It's just a big pothole, effectively. Just, you know, just, just cover it with uh, some metal. You could. If Kong could fly or could crawl through it, is there, like, does that mean there's, like, a, not really a portal or anything through that one? Since it's just a straight hole? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I, we said portal. They uh, definitely looked at each other through, like, <laughs> the middle of it. Well, I, 
I don't think they could literally see each other. I think it was a, a sense of like they know, like one knows he's up there, another one knows right. that he's down there, and they're sort of. <laughs> I don't think they could actually make eye contact. It's not like a window far. that they yeah. can. Hey. <laughs> um, <laughs> Come at me, bro. Well, now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe it was less of a portal and more like there's like a, a sort almost like a, a stretchy barrier because it kind of looked like when Kong went through it. It was like a, a light hologram that stretched and then opened because he's a titan, so it opens for him. Mm. So that I, was a weird scene, though, right? When they were going through there, it kind of reminded me of uh, Star Trek: The Motion Picture, that light show scene. It was very much that. Uh, yeah. I, I I think I even cracked a joke about it be, be, being beyond Jupiter at one point because it started to get very colorful. Right. Uh, yeah. Which you know. Neat. Maybe like a hint of. Um... That scene in Willy Wonka where they go in the tunnel. <laughs> love about that. Love about that. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so maybe it just did the same thing when he was climbing up. We just didn't get to see it this time. You know, because they, they, they did follow him out in the ship almost immediately. So maybe that was still an important thing. Maybe if they didn't follow him like quite quickly, they wouldn't have got through because mm -hmm. there wouldn't be a Titan to open up. Uh, or, or maybe not. Maybe it doesn't need to be opened up by a Titan. Maybe maybe they can just go through. It was just like. Godzilla would know which part to access or something. Like Godzilla Kong. I keep saying, I keep swapping the names. Uh, but yeah, um, the plot is insanely stupid. Uh, it just it just <laughs> introduces wild ideas that are the plot is insane. Really silly. Uh, there you know, at best there's a portal underground that leads to another planet where all the kaiju come from. Um, but what they made it sound like which is the worst case scenario, is that there's literally a somehow sunlit hidden world that's an inverse of the actual planet inside the Earth, where all these things live. Yep. Uh, that's where the first humans come from, too. Hmm. I wonder if that means Godzilla is also kind of like a like a, a gatekeeper. Like, you know, anything gets through, he makes sure either behaves or, <laughs> or dies. Gotta pay the toll. Yeah. <laughs> You just made me think of a. It's always sunny. <laughs> Gotta I, pay the troll tail. To get in that boy's <laughs> hole, yes. <laughs> Boy, so. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of sworn it was whole. I kind of sworn it was. This is all the sort of thing that always sunny would put in a episode. And you know it. You know that's not a character for them to have that line. <laughs> Well, Frank definitely says boys. He's trying to say boys' soul, but it, it always sounds like boys' hole. Yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, <laughs> actually, that's what I want for the next one because this this movie's making decent money, right? It's actually, it may actually get close to the opening weekend of King of the Monsters, despite the fact that there's a pandemic on. <laughs> <laughs> I heard like IMAX screens were sold out. Yeah. Uh. I assume it's reduced capacity, though. It's, like, sold out for the seats they had available, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Uh, but it's still... I mean, most people probably watching it at home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is good, though. I mean, if this, if this is successful enough to get us more, particularly more Godzilla, because, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I think Kong's had his story. He's, he's done. I really like Kong in this one. Like, I didn't like the first <laughs> Kong, obviously, that much, but I like Kong in this one, and I like the 30s version that we watched, so I would like more Kong. I found him to be quite sympathetic. Um, I mean, I think his story's done. I mean, I, whereas I think Godzilla, Godzilla's got tons of more things he can fight. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Plus, Mothra can come back. We can get the, the new Set rebirth the of Mothra. <laughs> I'm playing into it for the humor. Come on. <laughs> do, you, do you not think I'm self-aware? Do you not think I'm having fun with no. playing up? Oh. <sighs> the right monster one. <laughs> and it was fairly definitive, may I add. I mean, he was always going to win. I don't know. I was a little bit worried that because you know because Kong's the American creation that they were going Kong, to side with Kong. Kong is the underdog. Mm hmm. Yes. Well, this Godzilla's yard. I like that. Every time we get. It uh kong's <laughs> intro he's got a couple of intros in the film and it's always like some really american old-timey song playing like ah yes. yes the american kaiju king yes. kong from skull island <laughs> which is definitely not on american wars but, that's, that's <laughs> but he's he's american 
American. <laughs> American. <laughs> American. Yes. Uh, American citizen or pubic wig? Who can say? Depending on your American accent, it may be hard to tell. Is, is that a thing I should know? Well, whenever uh, Bush used to say my fellow Americans, it always used to sound like he was saying American, as in a pubic wig. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's where that joke comes from. Maybe <laughs> maybe inside the US that joke wasn't uh, used as much. I, yeah, I didn't know. This. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a new one for me. <laughs> my fellow Americans. <laughs> Americans. Americans. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Um, I'm sure Tony Blair had his funny words that I didn't know about because I didn't watch Tony Blair speak. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, he was during the Bush administration, I know that. He was. And yes, Michael but... Sheen plays him all the time. I feel like that was a time in history, though, where we were generally more favorable about the, the British leader than we were the American one. Uh, yeah, uh, Tony Blair had his... Uh, had his controversies though. Sure, sure. Still though, I'd go back to him in a heartbeat. Versus, I mean, I would uh, take him over Bush any day, of course. Bush is like. Well, well girl, I was going to. I was going to. I was going to say I'd take him over the current uh, prime minister, but yeah, sure. <laughs> Compared to yeah. American presidents. So. Uh, but yeah, and then there was a period where America had Obama and the UK had uh, the weird conservative coalition. Mm. monstrosity that happened after was that 2010, 2012 around then it did that? I can't remember oh dear um, I guess we're wrapping up the Godzilla vs Kong here uh, as Tara's own little Godzilla is causing chaos she is Yes. Kong is definitely my cat, Gus is Kong he likes Gus. to sit on top of towers mm -hmm. he's got a lot of upper body strength I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. You know what? I mean, like, it's a very silly movie. And like a lot of actual kaiju movies from Japan, like, a lot of them are really silly too. Like, oh, yeah. I, if anything, my only disappointment with in terms of, like, how silly the plot gets is that I was hoping there was going to be more aliens involved with what was going on. <laughs> and aliens do exist because they did confirm in the last film that Ghidorah came from outer space. So at the very least, Ghidorah himself... Is an alien. I think uh, the first time I watched it, I I heard them say something about Roswell, New Mexico, Area Fifty One, but I didn't see it the second time. No, no, it was, was there. It, it. it was. It, I mean, it may just be a joke because the conspiracy podcast guy who says, eh, "Can we talk about the 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 Monarch base in Area Fifty One? So I mm -hmm. don't know if it's actually meant to be taken as a serious like, oh, this is just something else he believes because okay. because it's Area Fifty One. It's the classic conspiracy. It's the classic, you know. Right. We're going to storm Area 51 or whatever. Yeah, Remember that was that? the thing that was going to happen a couple of years ago. Right? Remember? Anyway. Remember that was the thing. That was the thing that was in the news. Uh, yeah. I had Is fun. It time? What to rate? Mm -hmm. Pretty much. I mean, I had fun. I, I, I think this is this is probably a tighter movie overall than King of the Monsters. I think I love Ghidorah as a villain so much, and. I do like that Godzilla is a bit more revered as the hero in the last movie. So I think I lean towards that a little bit. Uh, that said, though, pound for pound in terms of the actual... Like, because I think the images of, like, Godzilla and Ghidorah, like, squaring off look better as, like, an image, right? But totally. I, think the, I think the actual choreography of the fighting and the actual moves is better in this one. Uh, yeah. The actual action of the moves and the, like, what they're doing to each other, you know, the flips and the... all that. You know, at one point, Godzilla just, like, tail whips a plane, like a jet. Like, when he's fighting in the water, he just, mm -hmm. his tail just comes up and just whacks it. And it's like, great. It's like, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's good. So, you know, and I love the teaming up. Teaming up's glorious. Uh, and I do I do think that if they do make another one, it would be nice if, okay, something comes to Earth, maybe Godzilla actually, once he maybe fails initially to fight something, actually goes to Skull Island himself to say, hey, Kong. <laughs> I need your help, bro. I need your help, right? Monsters assemble, kind of thing. Like, uh, you know, I wonder if like they could do something with that. Uh, but uh, I, I have no idea where you go after Mechagodzilla uh, with the Ghidorah brain. I don't know, pick, pick, pick a monster, 
Uh, maybe, I mean, Legendary also do Pacific Rim. You could totally do, just, like, do a Pacific Rim crossover if you want. Why not? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, you may watch the second one of those, though. Uh, could be the first one. Uh, coming soon. Uh, all right, Tara, what, what do you want to rate Godzilla vs. Um, Kong? I, I really had a, a fun time watching the movie. Um, maybe it's just recency bias or whatever, but, like, it was so... It, I, I really... I wish I, I could have seen this in IMAX, but I, I still... Movie mm-hmm. theaters in my head are still closed, <laughs> even though they're not. Um, so I didn't even think about that, but it's... Uh, it was It was a blast to watch. I didn't hate the human characters. I mean, they were definitely the worst part, but they weren't like as bad as usual. Um, and yeah, the fights were just too good to ignore. And God's every time Godzilla and Kong were on screen, whether together or apart, they were, it was just so much fun. Um, I really like it. I'm going to give it 7.5. Highly recommend. Yeah, I, I mean, on the humans, I would say they're just, they're not good characters, but they're largely inoffensive for the most part. So, uh, mm-hmm. therefore not as actively annoying, but also don't really add much to anything either. So it's just, you know, kind of a, kind of whatever. But, uh, some of the characters were actively annoying in the last one though. So that is worth mentioning. Uh, so, yes. uh, Bradley Whitford, glad you're not back. <laughs> It's a shame, though, because I love him as an actor, which is what makes oh, that yeah, me so too. heartbreaking. But, uh, yeah, monsters are good. Their fighting is great. The visuals, of the, the particularly in Hong Kong, is wonderful. Uh, them teaming up is, is great. I love the, the use of the Ghidorah head. Um, the Hollow Earth stuff is just kind of like... Because that's something that was pretty much made for this franchise. It was brought up in Kong originally, and clearly they had this idea that we're going to go down this path, and... Uh, Maybe I think it'll probably grow me over time. I do. I, at the very least, I appreciate just how unrelentlessly it's willing to go down the path. It, it never half asses it. It's like no, there's this underworld world <laughs> that yeah, exists. Yeah, it's 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 so like Jules Verne, Lost World, like it's it's very much that old science fiction like story that's yeah. in there. Yes, and they but, go all in. I like the monster designs in there too. Sorry but, about that. But as with uh, the last film, uh, you don't have the aura that he had in the first film uh, in 2014. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't feel special like that film for that reason. But I did have a lot of fun. And it, it, I actually think I enjoyed it a little bit more the second time. And I think it helps that it's actually, not including the credits, which are like 10 minutes long, the movie's about an hour 45, which is actually, feels kind of brisk these days yeah. for a big blockbuster. So with all that said, as, as long as you actually want to enjoy a movie with kaiju fighting. If if that sounds dumb to you, you're going to hate this, stay away. But as mm-hmm. long as you want that in your life, I think I'm happy to give this a 7 out of 10. Not bad. It's good. Like, I, I enjoyed it. It's, it but it's, it's one of these things where I enjoyed this, I enjoy Kay and the Monsters, less so Skull Island, but... I enjoy them not because they're actually good, good movies. Because they're, they're not really good movies. They're, they're like, from an objective, a critical eye of like what makes a film like good filmmaking, this is largely not that good <laughs> in a lot of ways. So, but not I like, like the first one. Yeah, not like the first one. The first one, I think, is actually kind of special. And I know not everyone agrees with that. but um, Especially not IMDb. Oh, yeah, for sure. But... You know, to me, these films are kind of like in the same way when I'm talking about slasher movies. Like, there's very few slasher movies that are actually special. Like, Halloween, the original Halloween's a special film that is, like, immaculate and is this wonderful thing. You know, King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs. Kong was a lot more like Halloween 4 and Halloween H2. They're good fun, but, you know, you like them because you like slasher movies. They're mm-hmm. not going to change your mind on their own. And that's okay, but that's what they are. But... Part of you does kind of want, the, you know, part of you hoped after that first one that we'd get like a trilogy of movies that feel like this. That yeah. Ghidorah would have this same aura about him. That when we get Mechagodzilla, as much as he's a silly idea in a lot of ways, that it would feel something like that. And so mm-hmm. there's that minor disappointment, but yeah, it's fun. I mean, I, I wonder what those movies would be like if they have the same tone or the same director. Just make all three four i guess yeah. in this case I, and I, what that would what that would look like i think you can do it with Ghidorah. I, I think you could easily take the tone of the first one and apply it to Ghidorah shows up 
He's even bigger than Godzilla. He is, you know, this sort of, you know, because I, I think you can just sort of make it go bigger, but with the same tone mm-hmm. and the same sort of uh, sense of uh, theme and, like, uh, you know, aura and all that. Uh, I think Mechagodzilla is harder. I think Mechagodzilla might need a bit of a goofy or B-movie feel to it to make it work. I don't know if you can do a serious Mechagodzilla. Yeah. Whether it's humans created or aliens drop it off because they want to take over the Earth, either way, it's silly as shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know. Firefly, I think. Firefly? F- Firefly uh, is a little disappointed because I think he was written for Kong. Uh, whereas Wesker was was written for Godzilla, so he was very happy. Um, mm. uh, Garrus is the wild card, though. He was he was there for Mecha Godzilla, so uh, <laughs> he would like everyone to know that Mecha Godzilla was clearly about to win, and he only mm-hmm. lost because it was two on one. Um, I see. To which Wesker responded, "Well, yes, but Godzilla was only going to lose because he was weak from the big fight from King Kong. He could have maybe taken if if Godzilla was well rested, and this was a one on one fight. Maybe he could have taken." Oh, Mecha Godzilla. My cats are such nerds. My cats are nerds. They get it from me, don't you, Firefly? <laughs> all right, there you go. That's a red. Uh, all right, if you made it this far into the review, into this epic, uh, put the words coward into the comments. Uh, I like it. To let us know. And commenting is a, one of the ways you can help support everything we do, as well as liking and subscribing. So please do. Um, Tara's going to post for the thumbnail. What am I going to do? I don't usually decide that. <laughs> you never asked me that. <laughs> You're just going to superimpose Kong's head over mine. <laughs> I don't know. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, three, two, one, pause. <laughs> Can you do that? Can you work with it? I can work with that. I mean, I feel like I'll be cheating by just giving myself atomic breath again, but I, I feel like it's, it's what fits. <laughs> it's what that fits. Um, maybe, maybe I'll, if I really want to get fancy, maybe I'll like cut off your head as if the atomic breath is like knocked it off and have your head be over a little bit. No, I don't like that. No? Okay. <laughs> All right. Try to jazz it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a horror movie fan, all right. My my <laughs> my instincts go towards splatter, mm-hmm. gore. Um, all right, there you go. That's the uh, that's the that's the movie. Um, yeah. Um, I actually did not look ahead to pick out some YouTube comments from the trailer. Uh, honestly, though, the trailer for this will probably have thousands of comments because it's a new movie. <laughs> so yeah. Probably our best, the best that I didn't do that. Um, just for fun, though, so I'm going to click on the user reviews once again, MDB. I'm just going to look at the one out of tens, and I'm just going to look at uh, the first, the first one. The title of the first review in the one out of tens, of which there are ten so far, is called Spy Kid Six. Okay. Someone thought this was a Spy Kids movie in spirit. They made five of them? I guess they just really didn't like the kid characters. You gotta have, in a blockbuster though, you gotta have kids. Like, I I think there was four Spy Kids movies? But do we think this person did research to check how many Spy Kids movies there were before before they made this comment? (laughs) I mean, like, the kids were a part of the movie, but like, not such a major part that you don't that it, I, I don't know, like the, the a one out of ten. I don't think so. Do they just ignore the the whole Kong versus Zilla part? Uh, one is titled "Generic Storyline." I mean, in some ways it is, but I mean, I, I don't know if I can call it generic storyline when they're going through a portal in the ground into like a magical earth that exists inside their own earth. <laughs> you know, it's a bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, 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 that has some balls. Uh, but yeah, okay, there you go. That's all the interesting ones. Um, there you go. That's the movie. That's uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, and it was fun and, mm-hmm. dare I say, good, but with a lot of asterisks and a lot of caveats. 
thought and, we weren't too different on our yeah. uh, ratings, even though our reviews seem very different. That's true. Well, uh, yeah, but the one the one thing I I was sort of picking you were at. Nitpicking. I, I mean, I wasn't picking a lot, but but uh, I mean, I think there's some valid critiques in there. I mean, the stuff that we kind of expected, like the human characters to mostly suck, uh, mm -hmm. turned out to be true, and that's just kind of is what it is. Um, that's what this franchise is. Although yeah. I don't think the first movie has bad human characters. I think people are wrong. Sure. Uh, I, I, well, I mean, I think the first movie at least benefits from not having too many. So at least like the characters that are there feel more refined and focused on, even if a bit bland and generic. Uh, but there is a purpose for them being there. Yes. Yes. Oh, David Strathairn never came back. We should have seen his reaction to everything going on. Oh, uh, yeah. Because he did pop up in Kind of the Monsters for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Hey-ho. That is Godzilla vs. King Kong. Uh, so let us know what you thought of the movie in the comments below. If you saw it, you can like and subscribe. All that stuff. Super important. Very uh, easy to do. And it's the simplest way to support everything we do. Uh, Tara, of course, told you about Patreon earlier on. Uh, so please go over there. Uh, Tara, would you like to uh, promote anything else that we do on the channel? Um, well, if you like HBO Max, they're now um, streaming episodes of Babylon 5, which we are watching for the first time. We're in season two, so watch along with us, catch up. It's been fun. Yes, although the order of episodes in HBO Max is slightly different from the order that we are watching them in. As we have found out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Follow the IMDb order. But, uh, yes. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, go do that. Uh, catch us on Twitter's at mail underscore fudge for channel updates. Uh, but otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching science fiction and computer at Salsa. Roar.